What is happening, everybody? Welcome on this happening Wednesday afternoon. How's everybody doing? Little Panzer Dan, rule number one, don't wake the wife. Rule number two, don't wake the baby. <laughs> I might have to get to flip those rules around. Relatable, what's up, Corey? How are you? They, oh, can't join the session you guys enjoy. Oh, that's okay, man. Thanks for stopping by. Conan, Stanley, model guy, Juan Pablo, hello. Zhao, good morning. Some of you, it's evening. Some of you, it's in the morning. What's up? What's up? What's up? How are you, Bill? Raining like hell in Tennessee. Interesting. It did. Uh, the United States weather did go 180 the other way. It is. It was barely 80 degrees today. That was nice. Just adjusting the mic volume a little bit. Okay. Omniplow channel. Woo, how are you? Good morning from uh, from here. <laughs> Where is here? I forget where you're from, Woo. Are you Taiwan or Singapore or you're Asia, right? Yeah, you guys have the humidity. My first, my first live view. And Travis Thompson, welcome. Episode 17, you made it live. <laughs> Give everybody a few minutes to roll in. Matt, how are you, bud? South Korea. Okay, we'll think I was close. <laughs> I was in the region. I'm sorry. Usually I'm pretty good with it. Marino, how are you? Usually Dominic, I see you. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, Thursday morning to you, uh, to you guys in Asia, New Zealand, Australia. All that stuff over there. Stanley Howdy, howdy friends. Yeah, it's a good day. Good week. Pretty chill week. Gonna be busy tonight, though. Hello from Queensland. How are you, Darren? Good day. So, what was it? yeah, it's like Thursday noon, 11 noon. Checking in from DC. Mr. Peter, how are you? Oh, everybody having a good week so far, though? Yeah, pretty chill here. I'm just chilling today. These night streams are a little tougher. I'm always a little stiff and sore. I've been working all day. I'm actually painting half today, too. I had to stop and then re redo some, uh, reset my body because I'm like, hey. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Model Guy mentioned that. Got to say, Mike, your interview with the Plastic Posse podcast with Adam and Martin was awesome. Was laughing out loud and drive home. <laughs> we had a good time. Yeah, Marina. Yeah, it was good stuff. 1 p.m. Thursday in New Zealand, Neil. Thank you. Right on, right on. You guys hear the music? Everybody's good. All the sounds are good. I'm good across the board. Yeah. A little hot under the, the light here. Push that back a little bit. Yeah, I forget we recorded that maybe a month or a month and a half ago. And, and um, it was the day or day after uh, Martin got his full leg cast put on. Everything's good. Thank you, Darren. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I've been going through making sure everything's um, with the share screens. And so I've got some reference to share today. Uh, hopefully this goes pretty smoothly. Fixed all that stuff. I pulled up a bunch of train reference so we can look at some stuff. We're going to we're going to kind of get into um, and if there's any early questions, guys, go ahead and post the questions. If you got any early questions, uh, anything you want to have questions about, whatever. Uh, I don't know the meaning of life, but other than that, we can we can we can answer a few other things. <laughs> So Diary Martin's helicopter rescue. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody will probably do it. The Datsun. This is, uh, I just got this one today in the mail, actually. This is a, an Alfa Romeo a Berlina, so the sedan. This is the actual Alfa. Uh, Italy ran these as police cars. They're very aerodynamic, believe it or not. It's the four-door sedan version of the Alfa Romeo GTV. Um, I drove Alphas for almost a decade. We had a, we, my girlfriend and I. We had quite a few. She still has her spider. She said, which is which is really. She has a graduate spider, 1989 
Alpha Spider Black with tan interior. And I had a silver coupe. It's 1971 silver coupe. And this is probably a 72, 73 vintage uh, Alpha. Uh, right now, Zal, I've got a 86 BMW E28 5 Series. And then I have a 1986 Volkswagen Golf Mark II. And both are older than most of you guys in chat. <laughs> Well, there's some old dudes here. There's some older, old, old fuddy duddies in here too. But, but yeah, they're both whatever, 36, 37 years old. Uh, shipping, shipping probably won't happen for a while. Maybe September, October. Yeah, I'll update everybody on the books pretty soon. Towards the end of this month, we're we're trying to figure it all out. There's, there's, it's shipping will probably be more of a problem down the printing. <laughs> you go out of one kitchen into the next frying pan into the next frying pan. Because uh, what we're trying to do is figure out how to get the books out of Europe back to the U.S. now, and that's where the everything's super nuts right now with the, with the prices. So and they're heavy bulk stuff, but yeah, they're they're wrapping up the first group printing, and TG one and two is in the second group printing. So probably not till fall, Matt. To be truthful, but we posted that. I posted on the on the um, on the website already, kind of keeping that up to date. Yeah, you guys are all looking good. Yeah, all the old dudes pop up. Like, hey, I'm old too. <laughs> Arnel Flandes, how are you? Good evening. Your first live attendance. Welcome. <laughs> I'm old in my shirt. Well, my shirt's only a day or two old. <laughs> so technically we all are. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, turn the big 5-1 this year. We're, we're, we're on the way down. <laughs> There's no going back up. It's all downhill from here, my friends. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the older cars. I don't, I don't drive a lot of the new stuff. No, I know most of you guys are pretty, pretty middle age or older in, in this in this world. Bill had a TR7. Do you have a TR7 in the U.S.? Because those that would have been a thing. Top Gear Rinaldi. Yeah. Well, if, yeah. If you guys don't know, I, I was a well, I trained as a car designer. I didn't really do much as a car designer, but I, I did all the the legwork for a long time. Designed a few motorcycles and some other stuff. A lot of aftermarket stuff, did some interns, but nothing on the road I ever did. Question, green and brown, late Panther G is throwing me for a loop weathering wise. How so? Be more specific, please. 87, 944 turbo. There you go, Marino. But I learned to drive a five stick on my dad's 83, 83 and a half, 944. Uh, an airline pilot had, had imported one of the country like the first month that car came out. It's been 1983, 84. Um, and I would have been, yeah, 13 or 14 years old, so born in 70. Um, and the, and the pilot had to sell it right away cause he was never in the thing. So he sold it. My dad picked up for like, and that was when the car was like an expensive $25,000 Porsche. And I think he got it for like 21 or $22,000, which, you know, you just can't imagine that today, but it was, it was the red black leather interior, five speed, great car. Yeah. you of course we are George. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Big backlogs. We all got a lot of model building. My first car. My first car I owned was an 84 uh, GTI, the square light Pennsylvania built one. And the first car I drove was my stepdad's Volvo 244, which was in that that awkward, smoky sky blue color. You know, Volvo made that color in the 80s. I don't even know what it would be called it today. Because it wasn't it wasn't like a like a it wasn't like a French blue. It's like a cloud blue with a hint of gray to it. Anyway, it's kind of ugly. It was an ugly car. It was the big bumper Volvo. Yeah, that's what I, but that was an automatic. But I learned how to drive a manual and I haven't gone back to that. I, don't, I will not drive an automatic. Everything I drive is a stick. So Panzer, Panzer Dan, where'd you go? Panzer Dan 412. So yeah, go back to your, the green and brown one. I'm, I'm familiar, but what, what's your, what's your, what's your problem? Question, when, are, when doing OPR blending, why do you choose a round versus chisel versus rake to blend? Okay, cool. Good question, Pete. We'll, 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 We'll go through that. Usually it's the type of uh, effect you want to, to quickly answer you, Peter, is is like if you want to like a vertical, a thin, then the sharper ones. If you want to just kind of jimmy stuff around exactly, then you're going to want the sharper ones. And then the softer, rounder rakes are kind of for the cloudier, diffused kind of look that my squish brushes, the ones that are kind of splayed out. But we'll, we'll get into that more. Corey, you didn't buy that school bus. Yeah, you want that school bus, but you didn't buy that school bus. He sent me a like a hot rod, like a rat rod school bus. It was dropped over a frame with a big stupid diesel motor and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now yeah, we're all talking cars, but yeah. 
Yeah, but anyway, I'll leave a link in the description. This guy's um, Racer 8 Apparel. Um, oh, let me grab these too. I got this the other day. I couldn't wait to open it. Because yeah. I, did, I did the green one on stream a couple weeks ago, and then this guy showed up. Since we're talking cars for a second. <laughs> Yeah, this guy showed up. So this is this is uh, my friend Junamai, his his company Kaido House, working with uh, Mini GT who, who make this, and this is the the packaging here, which I love. I display it with it, the Pro Street Pro Street Five Ten. So this was the green one. These are about twenty five bucks. You can get these on eBay all day long. They're a mainline car. They're not limited or anything like that. Sixty four scale, the Hot Wheel scale. This bad boy. This is the first one I ordered. The purple one showed up with these deep spun aluminum rims, the gold. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys the, the, the G Ready, Greddy, as they say. Sorry, uh, licensed the uh, sponsor name on the motor too. So there's a little cast motor in there. There's a little. There's a full frame in here for the racing frame and everything. This thing is tight. Yeah. So the purple one showed up. So that's the purple one. And I want me one of them uh, window stickers. I'm gonna bug him for one of those. But I got I got a T-shirt in this car. And, um, I even got a little phone case with it on. <laughs> yeah, I'll put that. I'll put a link to, to the Kaido House stuff back in the description too. They are pretty sick. They're they're way nicer in person, by the way. Like they're no joke. And if you've ever handled a lot of Hot Wheels or Matchbox or even the premiums or the car culture stuff. Uh, these are excellent for for the money. The value is really high. Yeah, Corey wants a 2,000 horsepower school bus. <laughs> so what do we got here? Okay. Sylvain, hello. How are you? So Juan learned to drive on a Peugeot 505. We had a few of those here in the U.S. until Peugeot left. They're cool. You will still see some occasionally. Uh, distinct. I wish I missed uh, Peugeot. Um, we lost quite a few cars. Um, Renault, obviously, is not. Oh, most of the French brands aren't here. All the French brands aren't here because I don't think Alpine is coming in either. I can't remember Alpine if they're coming in or not. Um, that's the chase car relatable. They're they're um, the the green and purple ones are about 20, 25 bucks. The chase cars are about 150. And if you guys know what the chase cars, every case of uh, diecast cars, if it's 24, there's a special one in there uh, that's um, unique and it's called the chase car. So there's only one in each case. It's a little bit more limited. What are you watching a grown man play with toys? Yep. Yes, we are. That's what we do. We're good at that. This is our uh, forte. All right. So let's go through just a quick review. Got my little brushes set up here. Let me set this a little bit. <clears throat> Fiat's, uh, Fiat's um, well, Alpha's here. I think they own, uh, Fiat owns Alpha. The Fiat's around. We don't, they don't sell the Fiat's. Uh, the, well, the, no, I'm, my bad, my bad, the 500. We get like one. <laughs> the SUV, the, yeah, we get a couple Fiat's now that, I, that I'm, you're right, I'm blanking on Fiat. I see them all over town. They're the little 500s are everywhere. I don't think we get the full line. I think we get like three of their stuff. And then Alfa Romeo, we just have the GTAs and GTVs or whatever, which I'm not, and the, and the SUV, just not a big fan. Not a fan of any of the newer versions of most stuff. That new Alfa is just nothing like the old Alfas, trust me. It's more like a Beamer. It's just an Italian German car. Whereas the old Alfas were Alfas. All right, so let's see here, where's my stuff? We can get rolling. We can keep chatting cars while we paint. So I had to make a new palette. So we have my little color palette here. So as you guys recall, we had a lot of good time over here in the pink. Yeah, we got our toys back on screen. And so what I had done, oh, I meant to show you. Get, I always my brain's always a little bit off. Okay, we're gonna lose the music. I believe we lose the music with this, but 
add this to stream. Let me switch to this screen here. Okay. So I can go back over here. Now you guys should be able to see that nice and juicy now. So this is our references. So I've, I pulled up a bunch of images of what they call these the war bonnets. And so what I had done, and if you can just, you'll see it on the left-hand side, small screen there. So I've airbrushed on top of the, the black plastic, this kind of grayed out, dusty, grayish, tan, yucky, sooty. And there's some actual like gray paint in here because some of the, the pieces are actually a different color. I put a few of the little yellow bits on the, uh, what I don't know what you want to call those, like hazard marker things or whatever. So I put some of those on, dude, just kind of getting started with that. So I just want to show you, some of these get pretty, pretty, pretty click on the screen. Yeah, you can see how faded that paint gets up. You can see the Santa Fe out, but you can see the lower part here under the, under the trucks over here. The fuel tank area is all this kind of grayed out. And I don't know, if, I think some of it is actually painting that color. So some of it is, some of it isn't. I'm not 100% sure. So let's see here. Just scrolling through and show you guys some overviews, what I was looking at, what I'm looking for. This guy, this is a good one. This is an East Coast train uh, from a guy in uh, Maine or Massachusetts. This one has some real good down on the trucks down below with the rust and the, the leaks and everything, the grease and the grime and the various colors, the replacement hubs. So that's a nice one. And this one's good too. I like this one too how pink and dusted and those colors are in this view here. We're going to do a little bit of this today. So if you look at kind of the front of the top engine area, those rust spots and that kind of grayed out faded pink area, where it's kind of like, I think it's like down to the primer almost. So we'll do some of that on this guy today, tonight, tonight, today, wherever you be, wherever you be, wherever you at. So this is the one we were looking at from last time. So I'm able to blow up those pictures, get that stuff up there on screen for you guys. But you can see there down low, we'll do some, we'll get kind of juicy, some of those, some of those streaks and stuff. Um, and I've got some pigments today too. We'll put some pigments in the oils, do some other little, little pro tips, get you some other little Jimmy jams. Um, and then I painted the rust part on the coupler in the front. So we can, we can do some of this up here in the nose, some of this stuff too. So we won't get that in detail because it's 87 scale, but just wanted to show you guys what some of this looks like. Some of these couplers get beat up, but you got the black frame behind it. Um, so that's kind of what they look like. So I've been doing a little bit more homework, you know, in this back to this one too, is you can just see above the Santa Fe, how rusted and in, in that all that paints come off from the heat of the engines and the exhaust. So yeah, these things go through some stuff. <laughs> they have stories. There are stories to all of these guys. Let's get back up to this one. Uh, let me show. I want to. This is the photo. I want, if you guys were on stream with me a couple streams ago, this is the um, the shuttle engine that's in the Smithsonian. It's one of the Columbia or, um, Discovery shuttle engines. Um, but that look of that kind of that white frosty on the outside on the bronze goldish color pewter metal, and then the streaks on the inside. So I meant to show you guys. I lost that photo. So, but we'll do some of that on the next stream with some Gundam stuff. Just kind of a preview. But I want to share that because it's a massive photo. Like I can zoom in like crazy on that thing. Yeah, like you can really get in <laughs> juicy on that. That's just, you can't, you can't deny, like this is the kind of, when I talk about reference guys, this is what I'm like, this, you've got to find this kind of stuff. You got to hunt, you know, this is, this is where you find a lot of that uh, kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, JC Chung shuttles nuts. <laughs> He's going to town. He's going to town. I didn't realize JC Chung was John Chung, who I know John Chung, and I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I started following it on Facebook. So let's see what questions. Uh, how do you get good photos from the sixth floor of trains? Yeah, <laughs> I'm almost close enough, Corey, to be honest with you, that the rail yard's like three blocks that way. Uh, I can see it going through the trees. I, you know, I, I was telling my friend the other day, too, I said, I've got to actually start, you know, once a week going over the mic and just snapping some pics. So just as it rolls by, because you can get pretty close. I think you can get as close as you want. Uh, do you do moss colors and oils or AK pigments or what? You mean like a green moss bill? Um, depends on what I'm trying to do. But yes, mostly I'd probably start with oils or, you know, if, if, if it's something where I want some green moss. Uh, I'm trying to think like the base woods of a board of a barn or something or, you know, on rocks and stuff. You can you can apply some airbrush colors first and then go back in and, and layer it up. There's no right or wrong, Bill. You do whatever you want, really, whatever works for you. But yeah, I, I, I can do the oils. I lean on oils pretty heavily. 
Model guy likes Mini Coopers. Yeah, I like the originals myself. The, the the original and then the BMW's redo, which was a Peugeot motor in the first one, uh, first gen, first gen redo, whatever you call it, because it's not a retro car. Same with the Beetle; they're not retro, um, because they're just continuations. That one, but they've, I forget the, I was trying to think of the year, like a 2000, 2000, the early minis were small. The new ones are too big for me. I'm like, dude, you're not even a fucking mini. The car is ginormous. Makes my Golf Mark II look like a fucking little toy. Uh, how would you rather rally cars? Flat coat the areas you want to weather? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. If it's if it's a pre-painted die cast or a, uh, if it's not a model, if it's not a kit, like you're painting the kit, that's a, that's like what we normally do. But if, you, if you're buying a pre-painted things out for a rally car, yeah, definitely like what I've been showing you, like flat cut those and then go to town. Reflective tape. Yeah. The safety striping. Thank you. Yeah. I've, I was thinking like hazard, like <laughs> I know there's a name for it. Uh, what else? Us trains versus rugby for the battle of faded paint surfaces. Yeah. Did you Panzer Dan? I never answered you. I asked if there was something more specific to your evening for us. How are you? Follow up to dust and light mud tones. Okay. Sorry. Seem to seem too pale for the finish. Um, well, okay. So you have to understand what you're trying to do. So the dust and light mud tones, if you're trying to create dust and mud, they're fine. If you're trying to fade the green and brown specifically, then you've probably got to tweak the tones to match the base colors you're using. I'm not sure what you're trying to do because for because I use those tones for dust and, and you know, kind of the lighter, uh, dusty tones. I guess you can light mud tones. I use them for actually what they're for uh, most of the time. I'm trying to think if, if, if I'm going to fade those paints, I'm going to probably use some of the greens and yellows and some of the browns and reds and stuff too. So. But contrast is contrast. You know, it, it does it, whatever the earth tones you want, Dan, is like for whatever your theater of war is like if it's, you know, what part of that's obviously 1945. So, you know, you're looking at, um, you know, Germany and stuff. You can study kind of the, the if you want kind of industrial city, urban environment, you can go more grays. Um, so it just depends. On, you know, there's no right. Again, there's no right or wrong. I mean, I'd find a couple of good color photos from the war of that time, which there are some. You can kind of figure out what you're doing. I mean, I've skipped that question. I think I got that back up. Oops. Focus back on there. So that's kind of the background. Let me put the, uh, get the shuttle in. <laughs> You're done. We're done with you. Um, so I'm, what I'm looking at right now is uh, on screen is we're looking at kind of the, the lower areas, um, the running gear, if you will, which is kind of a universal coin term for all this stuff. So kind of kind of what we're doing, and we'll do it on this here. So let's go back to this guy. We can get the music back on, add in the stream, go back to here. Yeah, when I share that four screen, whatever whatever the thing is, it it'll uh, kick the music off. But I figured out how it works, so I can I can work around it. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, but I do need to start probably taking some pics out there when this stuff goes. What is the brand of your blue hobby knife? It's a USA Gundam store, Schubert. Uh, USA Gundam store. I believe I'm linked them in the descriptions anyway. I think so. If not, I can I can add them too. Because they're the they're the ones where I get my um this guy, the the glass file. It's it's these guys, if you guys can I don't know if you guys can the glares. The glares so much here. Duh. Hold on. <laughs> I'm an idiot sometimes. Yeah, it's these guys. USA Gundam Store. That's the razor made gun primer. That's what this is. It's a glass fire. But the knife comes from there. You're talking this guy. I'm just talking about this guy. So I was in uh, number, is it number 11's X-Acto knives? That's what I used for years. But I like the newer, shorter, not newer, but the what I call a kind of to me a model knife because they're the ones that kind of made it popular, popular. That's where you get all that stuff. Yeah, they have a bunch of tools. They're um, I highly recommend these. Actually, this is this is my favorite from them, and they sell my books and stuff. So we're we got kind of a nice little deal going. Um, but this is their 2.0 nipper, and it's damn near as good as the God Hands nipper. And this will snip the parts off. It it is excellent. It's a little bit stronger, more durable, but it is it is nearly as sharp as the God Hands. And for about thirty thirty five dollars which is the same price as the mid price expensive to me one. Uh, God hands are about 45, 50 us, at least in the United States, sometimes $60 depending on what God hands you're getting. 
Yeah, but these are, this is, yeah, they're, the USA Gunham Store tools uh, are very useful. Even, oh, geez, I just shoved it in a little bit. Nope, I missed. Okay. Put that out there. All right, final questions, or not final questions, but yeah, hey, Megan, your previous, did you paint scratches and some small tools using oil paints or MSP, uh, your emission models paint? If I'm hand painting anything, Zal, it's going to be paint, paint, almost all of it. Like if I'm doing tools or anything like that, yeah, we'll, we'll get to these guys here. So what we'll do later this uh, this stream, let's get going here in a few seconds. It's all gonna fall off. So what we'll do is, yep, yeah, don't forget this. So we're gonna do some more pigment work on this. We're gonna do some oil stains on the wheels and continue on with that. We're gonna weather through the backside tonight, later after the trains. Uh, we'll get a little bit more into this guy. I did a little bit more from the last stream where I painted, uh, I just kind of kept the weathering going and then did some more. I painted a little square, some little dust and just kind of generally kept it going. I do that after stream too. Sometimes I get in the mood and I'm getting to my stuff and, and whatever. And, and sometimes I don't want to stop. Just let them the flow out. Yeah, the nippers are excellent for us. They're, they're the best uh, hobby nippers I've used overall. So they're as sharp as God hands, but they're as durable as Timia. What's up, Leo? How are you? What do you do when you have a limited color pictures of subject? Yeah, you're not going to find color pictures of Tiger One in Normandy. <laughs> like maybe one or two. Uh, there's a couple ways to go about that. Is is you have to cross-reference with modern photos. So use leopards in France or Charlotte, uh, you know, Char whatever, not Charbys, but the um, Leclerc, the French tank. Oh, my brain is just not working on the names today. Um, but yeah, cross-reference with, with photos in the region of the current stuff uh, to get kind of the color spectrums going with it with the stuff. But you're not going to find if it's a black and white stuff. You're going to have to. It's a lot of that's interpreting black and white what you what you're looking at. So um, yeah, you're not going to if you're not going to find stuff like that. You're going you're going to have to cross-reference stuff. But I also use photos of Panthers and Panther fours and threes and everything else to kind of build up what you're doing too. So it's a compilation. With black and white stuff, it's just kind of how it is. You have to know, like, your reds are going to be almost a black on, on on the image. So when you see the darker stains or colors or camo colors, those are probably the red tones. The middle ones will be kind of your greens, and the lighter ones will be, you know, the Dunkelgeld is, is fairly easy to spot. Um, and then building up the dust and the actual grease and grime and dirt and mud weathering, you can cross-reference that with color photos from modern era and stuff. You can, you'll still get a good enough kind of deal. And one of the positives you mentioned, don't fall in love with Yeah, don't. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to advance Zal, like one of the things I learned from, from the design school and from the professionals, the biggest trap, and I see this in the hobby a lot. I've seen a lot of hobby a lot and I, you'll see it occasionally and you'll know the guy, you'll know who I'm talking about. Like I'm not naming names, but like, you know, the guys that are like this, it's like, they're just in love with their work. Like they just can't get past how amazing they are. <laughs> well, the only way to get past that is, is to forget about it you know, use it as a reference point, but like, I like to sell my stuff. So I don't see it. I don't stare at my work. I don't keep it around me to, to like, cause what happens is you keep your, you, you keep your level the same. So you've got to always look up like, like we talked about the interview with Adam and Martin and those two guys are, are top end professional level, you know, scale modelers. So you get inspired by others to keep your juices going, your motivation going. But by, but what I usually do is I just, as soon as the project's done, it's, it's just, it's out, it's done. And then just on to the next one. Yeah, you're welcome, Leo. Hopefully that, yeah, there's not, again, it's just because they just don't exist, you know, kind of a thing. So you have to kind of patchwork a little bit, but it's, as you guys get going in this, where a lot of you are kind of starting to really dive into this, it's going to be collecting images over time. And then you're going to have to find a couple as you go. And, and if it's something you're really passionate about, you're going to really have to reach out to the Facebook guys, you know, all the groups and get involved in that level. Cause that's how we all kind of did it. So yeah. What's up, Phil? How are you? Oh, thank you, Matt. You're always doing my thumbs up. Yeah, hit the likes, please, and, and do the subscriptions and, and hit your hit the bell notification if you guys don't uh, know about that. There's a bell icon down below, and it'll notify you guys. Uh, you're running late, Joshua. You're always running late, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we don't worry about it. Josh is always rolling late. I wonder how painting and weathering a model entirely in black and white will look. You might have to try that. Yeah, it's 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 been on my bucket list of doing that. Well, you go through the process going downhill before going up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of that, you know, a lot, especially if you're, if you're just starting out with this, you know, the experience levels and stuff, it's, it's just like everything we do, you know, by the 10th or 20th or six months from now, or a year from now, things really, your perspectives really change. 
Let's zoom, zoom in there a little bit. Question we've got. We got a little double side tape going here. Hey, you guys got the questions rolling. Rick, how are you, brother? How is how is uh where you at in town today? It's a beautiful day today. I just shove my finger in this stuff. Every time. I never do this when I'm in, but when I get on stream, I just put my finger right in the oils. Stuff tonight for me, watch you or the timbers. <laughs> Try to do both. Who are they playing tonight? I am off my soccer. I know you're a bigger, much bigger fan than I am. It's one of those where I like going to the games, live sports for me. Like watching, watching the Timbers live versus on TV is a huge difference. Unless the bar is full of uh, tim Timber fans. Are you official Timber Army, Rick? I think you are, aren't you? I think I've seen your stuff or your, your little fanboy stuff. I was fanboying on the Kaido House stuff the other day. <laughs> so funny. Let's see what colors. Now yeah, we're going to do some dust colors. We'll turn it this way. I've been setting up my color palettes with all the other colors for all the other models too. So I go full spectrum, but like you can see, if I'm going to do a color palette for this train, I'm going to do my reds, my yellows, my oranges. I'm going to have my grays, my tans, my blacks and grease colors. And that you can get away with just that. Yeah, you are Timber Army. I thought you were. I thought you were. You and the wife are Timber Army. That's awesome. That's what I like about Portland. If I had a, if I really wanted to promote the city, promote the city, oops, I meant, is the fact that it is a basically a two team town. I don't know if the, the, the well the thorns too, but you know it's there's not two basketball teams, there's not two pro football teams, there's not you know three hockey teams. You know it's the Winter Hawks, the Blazers, Timbers. Anyway, let me just show you guys what I'm setting up here. So I've got my little base palette here. It's always good to refresh. You guys like the refresh stuff. Show you how I do. Double side tape. Get this stuff down. This is the odorless thinner. This is because I'm clumsy, but this is also, it's so, again, this is really lightweight. Yes, yeah, so I'll go through that for you, Zal, here in two seconds. Yep, you're correct, my friend. You are correct. Okay. So what I had done to mimic the photos there, because these were black plastic. Go back. More light. Um, so I put down, so this is an excellent light gray tone. Uh, I really like this tone for a lot of different kind of pale gray color schemes, uh, whatever I'm doing, whether it's weathering or, or armor or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then concrete is kind of a warmer tan, just kind of a middle tan color. So sprayed down just, and I'm not airbrushing on the street because I'm trying to speed a lot of that up a little bit, even though I'm running a little slow tonight. Uh, yeah, prototype photos. So, so you, what, what Corey's talking about, what we're, what, how this works, and I'm learning too, um, is in the train world, they call the images that we look at prototypes, and because they, they match them one to one. You know, we do it in the in the military the historical world as well, but oftentimes we we kind of hodgepodge stuff together. And I'm actually hodgepodging stuff together. Knows I'm taking stuff from different various trains and putting them on this one, but they actually model the specific specific because they're such good photo references. They call them prototypes. So that's what they mean by that. Um, yeah. Yeah, reference photo. Is the other card, reference photo. Yeah, it's always reference. So the reference will be the the, the backbone of all that. Yeah, Rick, your, your gas, that was, that, was, that was flex there. That was really nicely done. If you guys don't follow Rick Lawler, you guys need to start following Rick Lawler. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the heavyweights at uh, AK. Sporting KC, okay. Yeah. Right on, right on. Okay, Man Cave Productions. Would the painted aluminum part of the train body get a patina? Yep, absolutely. So if you guys are rolling in late, let me see if I can do this again. Add this to stream. Let's go back to here. So yeah, where's a good pick of that? That's kind of a faded, dusty one. It's the same one here. This guy here, is it this one? There you go, this guy. That's a good photo. You can kind of see how what we're, we started to put some of the coloring. So I'm kind of I'm kind of taking some of the colorways from this because the engine itself is slightly different. It's a mine's a little bit of an older version, I believe. Um, I believe the one on screen is a little bit newer. Am I right with that, Corey? I think these these one the 622 is a is a is a GD60. I think I'm not I'm not up to my thingy. My buddy was telling me what this was, and I was kind of taking notes and kind of I have to start learning what what engines are engine what engines are what. So I, I know you you guys laugh at that. It's like. But we also know what a Tiger One is, so there. <laughs> oh, but anywho, yeah, they do absolutely. Yeah. 
There you go. Getting a little smoother with that. Uh, Andrew, hello. Tinker, train art one. Eventually. Yeah. Patience, patience, patience. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Towards interesting view on not loving your models. Yeah. So it's not so much not loving them per se. It's just to advance your work, to advance your skill set, to to really like if you embrace improvement if you're the kind of guy that hey i want to get better with this because i know some people just aren't and that's kind of also its own argumentative commentary but uh or debatable commentary if you will but to what thing that i really learned like at the core of this like if you really want to like i don't go back and read my books to be i know this sounds weird but i don't like study my tiger one at all i don't because if i do i'm going to get stuck at that point now what i'm looking for is the next thing so by getting your previous stuff out of your head a little bit, you'll clear your headspace up mentally to focus in and then get the new references, pull the stuff in, what you want to do. It's one of the reasons I like bouncing around a little bit. This is really good for me to go from a Stug to a train to the shipping container to the robots and stuff because that that freshness is undervalued and underrated in this hobby. We get you know guys that do like P51 Mustangs. Like, yes, you can get really, really good at them. But one thing I noticed that all the guys that are like that is they all start really looking the same to me. And I lose interest as a viewer. And I don't say that to be critical. It's just observation. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, dude. That's like your fifth P51. Like, all right, sweet. You know, what else are you doing? And that's just how, always how I've been with this stuff. So in terms of advancing forward, um, you know, you look at the guys that really start doing, you know, like I look at a lot of like uh, the diorama, even though I don't do them, you know, like Jean Diorama does these really, like just to get my juices flowing, and they really come at it. And so this way you kind of build your portfolio over time. And, and I, again, I've, I've come across so many guys where, you know, the classic one to me is, is the Anaheim Nationals and you know, IPMS USA when, when, when um, the winner had like 64 Shermans, they look like one tank to me. I'm like, dude, every single one of them was the same burnt Sienna wash on. I'm like, okay. And I don't mean that to be a dick. I know I sound like I am, but it's like, there is no advancement there. There's nothing to be gained from, can I see progression from the first tank to the last tank? Or do I see the stories within those tanks? Because they all have the same weathering story. And it's like, there was nothing there. And I was like, that's a hard lesson. Cause I'm like, you just not, there was nothing more to it than that. You walk by the table, like, okay, cool. And it just didn't capture. And so I think that to search, seek advancement, to seek that level chasing, if you will. And cause even if you fail, totally cool. Because I know dudes and men and our male egos, we, we can't handle that well. So, I mean, I don't, you know, it's, it's always about that, you know, being able to hip check your egos a little bit and kind of figuring it all out. And But it's one of the key things was to not fall in love with your work was to either sell it or get rid of it or put it away and don't look at it when you're working on your next stuff. Like you can take it out later or put it on the shelf and have it around, but you'll find sometimes I'll have a little bit better. Even if you go a totally different direction or, you know, like your plateaus are the same and you don't quite hit that's okay. It's all part of that. It's all, that's all part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like, I love my old stuff in the terms of that was, it's, it's a great part of the journey, but you will, you will get stuck faster than anything else if by falling in love with your previous model. And that's kind of one of the, I, I had some teachers that really hammered that home, you know, they were professionals. Of course I get that. So it's slightly different, but it does work for this. I felt, but again, we all have our take on the hobby. You know what I'm kind of saying? Like, I'm not trying to tell people what to do or not do, but that's kind of that's kind of my per perception of it. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing this kind of process if it was just staying the same if that makes sense you know what I'm saying I'm trying to trying to share that with you guys yeah it's, it's a good topic George it's a really good topic because I, you'll you'll find especially in the United States it's one of the, the more contentious issues in, in US modeling to be honest because you will see this and this comes from me going to Belgium in the UK and in, into France and to, into talking and hanging out with all the guys in Europe and and, and the perspective of Eastern European modelers and German modelers and, and you like there's there's a very different point of view and there's a very distinct point of view in America. It's one of the reasons you don't see me participating in IPMS nationals to any large degree. It's just like, OK, you guys are just stuck because you just you're so in love with what you're doing. I'm like everybody else is doing things so differently and they, they want to do it differently and they want to try to do it differently and, and try to teach it differently. So it, it definitely is an influence on my own work. Yeah. Yeah, and that's there you go, George, right there. And that's how I that's where I learned from people like that. The filmmakers, the musicians, you see this in car design. One of the biggest crit criticisms I have of the industry in terms of the automotive design is like it's like fuck off, dude. It's like you literally just that's the car from last time. You've just inched it forward. Can't stand any of that stuff for me. So it's it's like that's like a pet peeve as a designer kind of a thing. So yeah. So it's a big deal. Yeah. Oh, what do we got? 
I don't even know. <laughs> no, you're doing great, Corey. Everybody's probably learning quite a bit. Yeah, okay. So it's an ES44A CDC or rebuilds. Yeah, it's deep and I love it. It's a dash 944. Okay, thank you, Corey. I appreciate that. Yeah, yep, yep. So anywho, okay. So while I answer questions, I'll try to keep going because I, I think you guys are in a mood tonight, which is cool. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah, I look at a lot of uh, Japanese modelers, Al, in particular. Uh, I know Indonesia is a big hub, too, now. Uh, Indonesia modelers in the diecast world, they do these crazy custom Hot Wheels. And stuff. There's a there's a lot of stuff to really look around and be influenced by and to pull it back into this stuff, which is totally cool. Uh, how you make uh, Mike's Mods? Oh, okay, Mike's Mods. Hey, old school evening. <laughs> but you guys know each other. Sweet. Okay. Uh, Scotty Scale Studio email. I do my best work when I kind of don't care about the outcome. Trying new things and experimenting and have all turned out as pinnacle builds. Yeah. And this is good because there's a couple guys in here that are kind of on their on their first starting points of learning stuff. Hey, Wayne, what's oh, OK. Gotcha. Thank you, Wayne. So you're using the other account. Man Cave Productions. Sweet. OK. All right. So good conversation, guys. So I'm just switching photos on my end here so I can kind of quick reference stuff. All right. So I've got my got all my little stuff here. And this guy will save for the pigments a little bit. Okay, so I got a, I got five or six fresh sharp brushes here. So to the blending question, I think it was Pete. We'll use we'll use these three. I'm gonna have to remember these guys as color brushes. So again, just this is just kind of touching on the subject of of making a decision. So if I want a precise blend, this is a this is my brush go to. If I want kind of a diffuse, cloudy, soft. Stipple, 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 stipple. This guy, these kind of older Jimmy Jams that kind of have done the duty. And you can make these, you can kind of, you can take some of these other ones here and you can really, you can get serious. And that's right when I want to find my, here it is. you hiding out? Are you hiding from me? I see you over there. So this guy, so that is a fresh version of the one on the right. But you can take this and crush it. Like you can get real angry with this and kind of push push it through a little bit and you can kind of start to develop it. Um, it's really just the bristles become really soft on their own. I don't really cut brushes up either, by the way, anymore. I, I just let the, the bristles go from this to this. And they just kind of go in my rotation of brushes because I'm always buying new fresh ones when they're still in stock because everybody apparently bought all the King Arthur. <laughs> yeah, this still cracks me up. You guys are the best. King Arthur's like, dude, what the fuck? Why is all the number two rounds gone? Yeah. You on the um, you on the hunt there, Corey, for this fact check? So that is C four four dash nine W or dash nine four four C W. It is yeah. So these all so again to the what the train guys call, and I know so Corey just tune me out for a second because I'll probably screw this up a little bit, but. Um, to all my historical military guys and other stuff, when we look at these rail photos in particular, we're looking at a specific vehicle. They call that a prototype is basically what they mean by that. So if you hear the word prototype being thrown around in the train world, it means they've got a photo of an actual and they're going to model that as is all of it. So that's a little bit different than how we do it sometimes. Even though some of the aircraft guys with your markings and stuff you get is in a similar mode, we just call it different things just so everybody knows. Yeah. TC, how are you, buddy? How is it down there? How is the New Zealand? How is my nog? I saw my boys in there. Mike, there you are. Custom Hot Wheels. Yeah, they're the best. They're fun. I went down a road of almost kind of, I'll probably have to do it in a year or two, but I, I've kind of dabbled. And I talked to Junamai about, he's a, like I said, we went to school together. Oh, the guy, that Kaido House guy. We went to college together. He was a, he, I didn't know his whole background because he had like a 15 year career where I didn't really talk to him. But he made it into the as a director of Hot Wheels at Mattel before he left. So he, he was a big dog. If you've ever bought a Hot Wheel that was a Datsun of some form, usually that those are his cars. He designed those like the 240Z. There's a purple 240Z in the Hot Wheels line. If you guys are familiar, that's actually his real car. He made a model of it. So anyhow, all right, we ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Some water. Am I painting a naked girl now? Camera, make sure the camera's working. So we're in the Wi-Fi drop time zone, by the way, too. So we'll make sure I keep an eye on the camera. I'm paying a protest. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Max Watanabe. Yeah, Max is phenomenal. 
uh, Naoki too. Um, there's some, some of the Japanese and the gun guys in particular. Properties builder mostly. What have I learned during the reason to come from Japan and regional? Yeah, absolutely. Real quick PPD interview the other night. Oh, you're welcome, Andrew. Thank you. And yeah, you guys that were really throwing the love for the interview to Adam and Martin as well. And, and obviously, I'm, we're, I'm no Scott. If, if, if Well, they're in Vegas. No, no, they're at the Nationals. So I know Scott and TJ. Um, have probably traveled to Las Vegas or on the or on the road to Vegas right now or on the air. You know they're going to Las Vegas this week as we speak, so they probably won't be in chat. But very appreciative of what they've done with that. That was a very well received uh, episode. We had a lot of fun. Lots of fun. Okay, so light to dark. I'll keep it simple for you guys. We've got our we've got our kind of dusty grade slash paint tones down on this. And I like that because working over black is a bit of a bitch. So it's nice that we can get some light tones to start with. And so just to show you guys, if you're unfamiliar, this there's that little latch there holds this, this upper part. It's just a snap shell. There's the inners and then the outer. So I put it back together. So there's a bit of an unrealistic break right here. And there's a bit of that, this, this thing here. That's like the plastic snap part. This is kind of a mid-level. This is a Bachman. This is kind of a mid-level level train. If I if I get that Corey and the train guys kind of this type of quality product, I've taken the rails off too, by the way. So all the railing's gone, uh, and I, I was gonna probably make some new ones, but we'll see where we go. Uh, we'll work low. Uh, let's start with this the big piece for any my balls. Everybody good? Operation Stardust. How are you? How you doing tonight, my friend? Okay, everybody good. Everybody good. Yeah, I want to do some of that anime painting style. There's a couple guys I follow on Instagram that do it really well. But I like being influenced by by others in terms of, you know, ideas or, or being really, you know, keen on that process to really advance my own stuff. And and it doesn't not an imitation form, but it's just like, like that's a really cool idea. That's a really cool style. Um, one of my favorite modelers. Most of you guys won't know the name, but his name is Ulf Anderson. He's a Swedish modeler, and he used to work like in three colors and forced himself into this box of like three colors and just what he could do with it. Fantastic way to, to process weathering and stuff and, and learn things this way. So there's there's a lot of ways to go about, you know, looking at it. I spent a lot of time looking at illustrator styles. Uh, what I illustrators like concept artists, designers, um, painters. Things of that ilk. So I'm making up Let me, just, let me just zoom out real quick here, you guys. Give you guys, a, I'll do a little brushwork mixing. So I've got kind of my darker tones in here, tans in here, greasy grimes, and we're gonna lay them down over here. So the first parts get a little thinner on the brush. Go a little. I usually get a little bit wetter just to get the bristles going because these are all dried up and you know they need to be prepped a little bit for your session. This is a fresh palette, so the oils are ready to go out of the gate. Just making sure I get my tips. These are gonna be my color brush, and I got my blenders over here. Just making sure all these, these, these so I'll, what I'll try to do is I'll try to keep one brush per like kind of color range. So this one I'll kind of use for like the light tans and stuff and I'll forget, I'll mix them up, I'll screw it up. You can get specific, you can put like, I've even thought of getting like a piece of tape and putting like, you know, tans and then make one for greens and make one for reds. And that way your colors stay pure because if you put the tan brush in the, in the green brush and kind of start mixing up and then you're trying to go back and you only have a couple brushes to use, things get real muddy and you want you want more of a pure color with this process. You'll find that you get a little bit more success out of that. So I'm getting kind of a mid-range dust tone here, slightly rusty in tone, kind of like this color spectrum in here. We can zoom back in again. I'm actually gonna put a little thinner down. Since it's kind of summertime, Summertime. So I just put a little layer of thinner on that just to let me blend easier. Sometimes you do that with the lighter tones and that's about as wet as you're gonna wanna get if you if you do this because what, if we do this, so see how my, my oils are kind of diffusing out a little bit? And I'm just going off of what we showed on the screen. Some of it's a little bit streaky and a little dusty to me. So I'm working light to dark. Just kind of getting a random pattern going. Oops, 
This is just kind of the first pass. This is, you want this kind of a diffused, dusty. I'm going a little bit slightly streaky. Do we have an echo? No, we don't, okay. Thought maybe I had an echo. Sounds like I have an echo. Uh, just a regular, just a regular odorless thinner, Timothy Offenbacher. How are you? Welcome. I don't use any of the fast dry or any of the, 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 the kind of slightly gimmicky products, if you will. I just use your straight odorless thinner. That's my go-to for a decade. Or any, if it's it, any hobby odorless thinner, usually. I don't usually buy art store thinners too much. Have you seen 40 Hammer Grim Dark style paint? Yeah, absolutely. Some of those guys are crazy. They do some real intense stuff. They do a lot of brush work too. It's way out of my comfort zone, if that makes sense. You know, I've never really done the Warhammer stuff. So eventually I'll probably dabble, kind of like what I've, how, and I would tackle this the same way as I do the trains where I've kind of really rolled in slow, work with the guys that are really familiar and, and you know, they kind of help me along and say, hey, this is what you what we do, what we look at. You know, some of my some of my train friends have, have really turned into really good mates where they, they really help out. And, you know, because I'm obviously really familiar with armor and can roll through pretty quickly, but it's um, and try this off real quick. Kick this down a little bit. And by working light to dark, this will, this will allow us to build up the, the darker tones a little bit more, more layered and successfully, which is one of the reasons I like doing it this way. So there's not a ton of visual change there, but you can see how matte they dry. That's why I don't you don't have to deal with the gimmicky stuff with the with the thinners. The little hair dryer, boom done, boom done done one and done. So I'm just getting a little bit more pure paint. Less thinner now. Got this little false lip down here. I got to kind of make it look good. That's just because of the way the train, uh, the, the this model's made, created. It's a little bit easy for this kind of stuff. And the reason I'm starting with this is because it is, it is a vertical streaking scenario, which is pretty nice. Usually these are the easiest ways to go. I'm just kind of bumping up a little bit stronger streaks. Switching to the blender. So I can tell in this brush here, just to give you guys an idea when we talk about brushes and stuff. So this one here is an older Loa low Kernel brush. It's hard to tell a little bit. It's not holding the tip very much anymore. Uh, so it's gonna be relegated to the background duty pretty quickly. Oh, that comes up new new hobby target card, yeah. But that's also my, my Achilles heel is the fact that I, I like machines in general because I'd like to build models of all this stuff, you know, truth be told. It's tough for me to stay focused too. That's also kind of the discipline part is, is remaining focused. You know, staying on point, not getting distracted by stuff so much. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a kid I want to do. Yeah, I think Dave Parker just showed his uh, new 16 scale Panzer one or Panzer two or something. And I was like, yeah, I gotta, oop, I'm out of focus. Huh? Not bad. I'm good, it's on screen, okay. I got to do a better job with my camera work too. My hands were blocking too much of the stream last time. But I've kind of got the distance right with the camera distance to the brush so I don't bump the camera as much with the brushes, even though my chin will hit it because it's right next to me. So you can see I've obviously put a little bit of a darker, oilier, rustier brown. Still working pretty wet. I want kind of diffused looks right now. I don't want to get too sharp streaky just yet. So my blenders and my, my colors look the same. It's going to be probably a little confusing. But it's okay. I've got it. I've got I've got it on point tonight.
just kind of this is kind of quick work i'm not trying to be hyper anything right now this is still kind of just building up and my biggest problem is i haven't been able to find this engine anywhere online like i've been looking a little bit i can't find what it, i would like to actually you know like what they call the prototype photos what we were talking about a few minutes ago And, and I'm just not searching well enough. There's there's obviously ways to do this. So I'm just not. I was kind of doing quick searches and stuff. I spent five minutes. And I was like, all right, I got it. I got other stuff to do. But it's a little too late now anyway, because I've already kind of started to do its thing. Okay. Just double check and making sure everything's going on screen nice. So you can see why I've put down kind of the second range of mid-tones here, kind of rusty browns. So it's kind of a little bit kind of wanky in here. So I'm going to switch to stipple this out. This softens that up. Gives me a little bit more of a spotty rust color. And that's because there's too much thinner down. That's the, the negative of working wet. Even, even though this is pretty dry overall, it's still fairly wet for OPR work. So now I'm going a little bit more pure paint. I can probably tilt that angle up just a hair for you guys. Yeah. Okay, this is I did I did screw up. Did get the blender brush with color on it. Face and call it the wrong name, and you'll, you'll look at it. <laughs> that is kind of the modern truth, right? Draw that about 75%. My streaks are a little crooked. And at this point, nothing's like dry, dry. So if you lose something, like if I lost that one big streak, that's okay. I can always add another one. This is low, low key, low stress. Nothing, nobody's, nobody's got their butt puckered up on this stuff. This is super chill. Cause like I'm a boy, uh, Operator Startup said you got the lo-fi going well. You guys hear that, yeah? Everybody's good. How do you maintain brushes? Yeah, so when I'm done with these, I will clean them in the thinner. And then when as I do, I roll them on the on the towel, the paper towel here, to a fine point so they have no more paint on them. And then I'll put them away vertical, you know, and try to put them away like that. So they, they'll stand up vertically in the thing. I've got a little bucket over here, a little, not a bucket, but a little a little up over here yeah over there they're all stand up vertical i don't lay them down as much horizontally because they're they're hard to find when you're looking for the brush you're looking for so if you store them vertically but definitely don't store them bristle down <laughs> you will you will mess them up you'll mess them up hard This is kind of a chipping scenario right there. A little bit of a sharp ledge. I'm just going to use it. Probably doesn't exist on the real thing because this little thing doesn't exist on the real thing. So this is a sharp blender brush, kind of just redoing that a little bit. And I'm going to use the color breaks between the gray and the red a little bit to kind of push that rust tone up around. Yeah, this is... Um, this this lo-fi is DJ Eric A R E K, and I've got him in the description. It's a little bit more of a similar beat to the whole thing, but it's got a good good um, kind of vibe to it. Sometimes lo-fi girl gets a little too sleepy, and it's it's nighttime here, so I don't want to be too sleepy. <laughs> if you know what I mean. 
be like, what's what's wrong? What's wrong, Ronaldo? Oh, he fell asleep. Yeah, old man problems. Yeah, I'm one of the, I'm a night owl, so I do all my best work at night anyway. I've always been a night owl. So when the, the whole COVID lockdown, I'm like, hey, cool, <laughs> sweet, I'm good. Yeah, I feel bad for those who have to go nine to five to work at home. And I'm like, well, I've been working from home for 20 years. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little bit darker now. So this is into the, the raw umber tones and the engine grease tones, which are on the color palette description, the names. You know, I should be drying. I should be using the towel in front of the camera there. You can see it's kind of a much darker brown color with spectrum right there. Raw umber is a beautiful color. So you have the burnt sienna and burnt umber is kind of my rust and red browns. And then my raw umber is your really dark brown. And you can see that the, this is a really nice demo because what this is showing you guys in particular is you can see the thinner on the blender brush and how much oil compared to how much thinner is down. And that's a really good representation of like a wet, how dry, when I'm blending kind of stuff. This gives you a good uh, visual spectrum. I don't think I can zoom in anymore. Oh, I can zoom in a little bit more. And see how it kind of looks cleaned off? That's actually when we dry this. Actually, I can dry it in spot, actually. I forgot. I put the hand on so that it doesn't blow the rest of the test. So see how you, you kind of kick down the thinner now. So that's kind of a pretty solid little intro right there into that section for now. I could keep, I could weather that for hours. I could keep going. Oh, yeah, I actually listen to a lot of lo-fi right now, Forrest. Um, I'm from the eighties. So I listen to anything alternative, um, that genre of music, you know, kind of circle back around. So let's work, we move to the trucks here. Let's, let's pull this, let's switch to this. Uh, Let's see, add to stream, let's go back to, yeah, let's put this on stream here. So we're, we're kind of, I'm even conservative. You can see how juicy this guy gets. So we're, I'm, I can punch this up, but I'm going a little bit on the, on the gentle side to start and I can add more. And that's a good way to kind of go with this, especially like I've, and I said this last stream in particular, uh, a really good point for when you're, when you're transitioning to a different genre or a new model or you're new to this, this is a good representation of when kind of starting kind of gentle, like my streaks and stuff. Cause when you look at the, the prototype photos, they're even juicier. So I can, I've got room to go up, which is good. Cause I'm not, I'm not cornered myself yet. And when you corner yourself with weathering, it's really hard to get out of the corner if you go too much too soon. So this is a good way for me to say, okay, well, I've got this fuel tank area weathered kind of nicely. And then um, switch back to that. So I've got kind of, so you can see I've got something going. It's, it's looking okay. It's not nearly as crazy as a as reference photo, but I can come back to that too, because now I'm going to work on the trucks a little bit and kind of get a vibe for that and, and, and then feel if I want to go more or less. So this is kind of, this is working section by section where this is a nice vibe, but I've got room for growth if I want it, if I need it. So I have the option. That's kind of important. Will you be moving to 6 p.m. time slot or going back to noon? So, George, this slide. So, usually Wednesday is this time slot. The summer heat's been brutal with the heat waves. So, this time of night, 75 inside, it's not too bad. Um, but it was, you know, 95 plus degrees at this time in Portland. So, it gets, it's, I'm not, we're not used to this kind of heat. You guys, you guys back east or in the south, you, you can handle it better than us. But yeah, us northerners, we don't, we do not. So this spot was supposed to be the East Coast nighttime and the Asia morning for the next day. For thir So it's Thursday morning, Singapore, New Zealand, um, South Korea, um, those areas. So those guys have a chance to hang out too. So 
So light to dark on the on the trucks here, kind of a dusty, same same color spectrum, kind of tans and buffs with a little hint of brown. Kind of airbrush those colors on a little bit, but you can see a little bit of capillary action going. Okay, so we can. Let me just kind of work. I'm gonna work kind of this little thing first, see where it goes. Maybe get a little bit under here. And we'll build up our, our color opacity as we go. And we'll leave this one kind of unweathered a little bit. And this one actually has metal wheels and stuff underneath. So this is one of those models that can come back like a like a metal tank track and, and, and freshen those up. Yeah, this is, I'm actually finding this subject really good example of, of teaching the OPR in particular. It's, it's from from a coach's standpoint, this is this is a pretty cool. What's up, Justin? How are you, brother? How you doing? How are the girls? Everybody good? But they should be in bed by now, yeah. <laughs> Get everybody to sleep so you can hang out. Let me try that real quick. So. Mute. <laughs> The Marissa Tomei episodes on Seinfeld was, was Costanza. Some, some, of my, some of those are just gold, man. The calls are like the like three days after Susan dies. So I'm free. <laughs> oh, she died. Yeah. Click. Yeah, good stuff. Good times. So that's still pretty juicy in there. You can see how wet that is. We're gonna we're gonna dry that a little bit more before we can add more color. It's going to turn muddy if you don't. See how, because this is, you can even see it on screen because the angle is almost perfect. I put too much thinner down on this section. So I've got a lot of kick off because I want to go darker with it, but I can't. So I'm just going to turn it into just a yucky mud pile of poo. So just let it go. Let it be. Uh, do, rib, do rib Nazi. No ribs for you. So I'm kind of working my way. I want to get that spring. I want to get in there, but I can't right now. We'll kind of just, we'll keep going around a little bit. Sometimes that happens where you just get a little bit too much stays like it's because it's collected in the little, the, the, the mold details, the thinner is not evaporating out fast enough. So that's, that's what's going on, which is not the end of the world. It just slows me down. And I want to go faster. Can I go faster? So I'm using this little blender to stipple, kind of soften this up. And these trucks do turn, so I mean, I'm kind of holding them. So in this, in the stippling, I know you guys. I think uh, Zal asked the other. Stippling is kind of the nice, um, gets you the gritty, that little spotty grittiness. see how quickly that's capillary action all through that's because there's a lot of thinner down in there i put too much down when i did the dust i probably wasn't paying attention right, let's see if we can get a better dry out of that observation your reference photo is the same size of the model you're working at at least in my career yeah yeah absolutely yeah, they're pretty close i did figure all that i had a little bit of problem with that last stream george where i couldn't zoom in and get the image to the to, to help you guys see that what i was looking at So you can see that's still pretty juicy. That's pretty wet. It hasn't dried. It's kind of a close up of where I was, what I've done. 
So you can see the simple airbrush dust layer gives you a really good base to work with in this situation. And here, let me pull this up. You guys can reference this again. You can kind of see what we're doing. So you can kind of see just working with the gray base tone with the gray tans underneath and then adding kind of the rusty brown, greasy, grimy, super simple color spectrum, really fun. Be honest with you guys, it's actually, this is super enjoyable, highly addictive. It's highly addictive, my friends. So this is just kind of me replicating that look a little bit. It's early days. Let me let me get a good hair dry on this thing. Dry that truck off stream a little bit. It gets pretty hot too because the metal heats up. Ripping the lobster off. Speaking about Seinfeld, do you remember the girl with the man? <laughs> yeah. She pop opens the Budweiser. She had man hands. So to the thinner question, I think Timothy, somebody up in there asked this. So this process with the with the cardboard palette, just to just as a as a reminder, refresher to you guys. So it's pretty much that's all dry, dead matte now. So you can see how matte that is. And now and how I kind of because I have the other work already done to that conversation about section by section and, and doing those what doing the weathering this way, like I don't even have to worry about this. It, and if I want to get whenever I want to play with that, I just look at this. I look at this now. I've got this going on here. Even if I had to stop and go eat Corey's ribs, you know, I, I can look at this. It's nowhere near done. Like we're first couple of colors are down. And now that it's kind of dried out, I can go back in and, and juice that up. Uh, I got to show you some pigment work with that too. But I've got the left side. So now I've got my reference already. And that's what I'm talking about where, where you got to do it. You got to go one. Okay, cool, man. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate that. So I want to kind of keep reinforcing that with a lot of you guys. Hey, G, how are you? Because that's like all of the stuff where I've, I stop and start, stop and start, stop and start is really applicable to the real life modeling because we all have those. We all stop and start all the time. Yeah. Mm, what else? Did we get everything? I just want to make sure I didn't miss any questions. That's actually looking pretty solid. It's a good start. Let me pull in some of this guy here. Where's the next Russian Earth? Black Smoke. Which one is this? Graveyard Dust is with the old school pigment. They did this right before they, they closed shop the Mink Fantasy line. It's their little pigments. It was kind of a darker one. Let me actually just use a pure black. Just use a black smoke. Okay, so. Show you a little something. A little something, something. Okay. When you want to do, get this brush. So I've got a, this is kind of a, this is one of the few times I'll use these. It's the only time I use these guys. I don't even know what size this is. It's a 5.0, a little this is super small. But I just need a little something. I'm not painting per se. Toys are, everything's expensive these days, right? Let me pop this lid off real careful. So this shit gets everywhere. Probably just use the cap. So we're gonna do here, down over here, with this guy here. I'm gonna put a little bit of a fresh brown wash right in there. If I have enough in there. Just getting some pigment on the brush. Not much. It's going right into that wet oil that I just put down. It's really delicate, precise operation. This is kind of that cakey, greasy, dusty, oil leaky. Kind of look a little more thinner on the brush, a little more oil paint. Kind of 
kind of, kind of a sooty, greasy. And I like that I got a little contrast in it with, the, with the gray areas surrounding that. And kind of, I, you can see I was very carefully left that front um, cover hub thing uh, cleaner. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Coupling cover, hub cover. I don't know what that is, what that actual piece is. But we can get these, these springs up in here pretty. So I'm just putting the raw black pigment right in that wet oil. Here. Let me pull, let me put the lid back on real quick so I don't f up this stuff. <laughs> Where did I learn all this stuff? I actually went to school for all this. Now I went to a uh, design school, art art and design school. Okay, let me let me dry this off real quick. And if you were running a contest or like you had to travel to a show, you time this out the day before. Hopefully you guys can hear, let's kind of. See how you're getting kind of a hint of a sheen through there? Kind of that black, greasy, cakey. Some of my best work, boys and girls. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. But that's a very effective way to kind of kind of really pull that back in. My buddy uh, Craig was was looking at uh, another one of our guys that had posted posted uh, his work with the with the leaky wheel hub. And so I I said I would show that on on screen how you do that. Yeah. So if you time this, that'll stay looking this way for maybe a week. You might have to. Uh, I was having a conversation with, with Spud. You guys know who Spud Murphy is, John Murphy. Uh, we were talking today about AK's 502, um, Toylong 502 engine grease oil paint. Has a little bit extra linseed oil in it and it'll stay greasy longer. So it's designed for that. So it's kind of kind of one way to do that real quick there. Did I miss something here? What do we got going up? When scratch paint, I usually complete one side, left arm detailing and move on to the other side. Yeah, yep, yep, same principles. And I did this, I think some of you know this story, but what was happening was, as I was doing seminars. Yeah, exactly. Mike is saying this is, this is, that's a, that's a Panzer. And we'll, we've got our Stug right here too, brother. We'll, we'll, we'll show it again on that. We'll get you kind of, uh, get everybody, um, catered to, if you will. So look at that. Yeah. So if we pull this back up here, let's, let's uh, add the stream here, go here. Let's see this guy. So here in this one in particular, if you look on the lower right front wheel, that's kind of what we were doing right there. That's kind of that, that captured. You see kind of the caked, dusty, grease grime leak. It's one of my favorite things. Like that is just the money shot. And I love the orange hub pop on this thing. I should paint a little orange on that just to, just to do that. This is a great reference photo, by the way. Like you can see that just the streaks coming down, the, the wet runoff on the top of the roof there how black weathers out great reference for black because that little tone right there is kind of a nato black there on that panel yeah so this is a really good photo stuff like this so um but you can see the the greasy leaking over here by this it looks like a fuel filler or some form farm form you can see the the fuel leaking on the tank in the lower left corner that kind of stuff i'm assuming that's kind of a fuel leak of some form possibly but it mixes in with the dust and the grime so these this is why this is and again this is applicable to to armor to the, the hub of a you know a bomber you know b17 or something that the wheel hub of something so it's all applicable if you guys are, are looking for that stuff yeah. yeah a couple of custom uh toys are to just pick it up uh let's see what else having screen are you guys having screen issues is, it, is, is there any problems here i know i'm a little bit hot under the light it's nighttime so we're gonna get a little bit of a different light scenario but the the, the table lock light, light's fine so we can see the stuff on the 
Uh, Jason's asked what then? Oh yeah, I think they answered your question for you. That's the AK Odorless Center. But any of the hobby brand Odorless Centers is what my go-to, but you can you can substitute other stuff. Don't substitute enamel thinners or I think white spirits fall in that too. They get a little bit on the, on the um, whatchamacallit, they're a little bit too strong. The Odorless Center is a really silky process thinner, which is good, whatever you want. Okay, everybody cool now? You good now? Okay, Corey, you're good? No screen issues? Yeah, okay, cool. Joe, how are you? Seen some new names in here. Mike, Jason, the bet. Okay, you guys good? Everybody cool? Mall of doom. <laughs> so yeah, okay, yeah, that's kind of nice. I'm done. I'm out of here. No, we're good. Okay, so let's let's. Are we good enough on this to hop on the armor, or do you guys want me to keep going on this a little bit longer? Like get this other part done. I'll let you kind of make that call. Because we're gonna do this over a series of streams. We'll keep going with a lot of this stuff. Let's show you guys here. So we've got the rusty coupler. Rusty Coupler. There's somebody's Instagram name. Somebody call it in. So I use the Life Color stuff a lot, but also just so you know, there is standard uh, rust tones. These are weathering paints in the Mission Models line too. So I, I painted I painted those couplers with rust. So what I did today basically is I airbrushed the light dusty gray tone. You can kind of see the, the shit work underneath. Just kind of gave it a quick dusting, not super clean. Um, and then uh, rolled in with kind of the browner tan dust and then hit a little bit of the airbrush on the rust because we'll I'll work that in later. And then, um, yeah, that's only, mostly what I did. And then added the safety stripes in yellow yesterday, actually. Uh, actually, I actually have to add more. They go along the whole side. So this is this is starting to, to look like a, a sort of real train, actually. So there you go, Corey. <laughs> but yeah. All right, cool. So let's let's transition to the Stug then, because we are yeah we're good on time. And then we'll do a little work on that. Yeah, it's fun. So that's addictive kind of fun. Let me get this pigment brush out of the way because it is a danger to everything. Pigments will get everywhere like nothing else. <laughs> So the beauty of OPR, and when you have your palette set up like this, gonna blow me out a little bit but I can probably even just go full screen just not even look at my mug anymore I don't think you guys will mind that part okay, I'll say pretty good kind of like I like sponges for these little setup thing so that's kind of the angle I see and the angle you see. We're seeing the same thing, which is pretty good. The model looks pretty good on screen. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Very kind of you. Yeah, the t-shirt dude that sent me the shirt today, he's going to send me a, he's got a new one on the Land Rover Defender. He's like, yeah, I'll get you one of those too. I'm like, okay. I'm not going to say no, but, you know, thank you. So on this thing here, just to recap on this guy, we had done the pigments. We'd started to do some initial stains. We started to do some initial stains in here. And you can see this is what it looks like when it dries after a week or two. And like I said on stream when we did this, that would be kind of my initial pass, kind of like what we just did with the, with the, with the engine was this was my initial pass. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Stug too. So it's a good looking little, little guy. I actually like uh, Stug 4s as well. Not a lot of people don't. I actually kind of do. I don't, I don't mind them. Let me just get my brushes. Oh, but what I did do, let's actually, we're going to lay a little bit more pigments down. Dropper. 
because this is a mission models paint job the the thinner for that will work really good for what we're doing uh, let's see I've got to, I wanted to the, the pigments to me in the color range isn't terrible but I kind of want a little bit more kind of a richer tone towards the the top of the suspension arms and I didn't quite get that last time so let's we're gonna do a little bit more actually let me set this up this way So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get some some pigments kind of up right behind the wheels a little bit, a little bit more. Let me grab this brush here. And, and this is the, the cool thing about this, where you can come back and do this stuff. Because this stuff is dried in there, I can actually get a little bit more physical. These aren't gonna come off at all. So, but I'm just gonna kinda, kinda spot in some of these pigments here a little bit. And I'm gonna kinda feather it up there. See how I kinda feathered halfway up? I'm kinda come in here and just, I didn't really get a good coverage on that the first time on stream. And I would do this normally, but I'm trying to save it the work so you guys can see this kind of stuff. And any stains I lose and stuff like that, I'll, I can regain them later too. That's no big deal. And I'd normally have the two wheels off, but we'll just leave them on for now. I'm not super I'm just not super concerned. Just wanna get a little bit more on while I've got you guys hanging out with me. Let's go into this return roll. Here. In fact, those pigments that are down from last week, they're not going anywhere. They're down, down. They're not loose at all. They are not coming off. So I've kind of, you can kind of see I've worked it under each of the return rollers and then a little bit around the, the, the rear shock absorber and to get a little bit more up in here and around the dry sprocket area. I hate doing this. Yeah, take that off. That's on a, that's on a, um, Polycap. Get a little bit better coverage for this. Gonna get a little bit richer. Gonna get richer. I kind of like the spottiness of the the whole showing through. So I'm gonna try to leave that a little bit. I actually like that look. It came out pretty nice. Kind of gives it that slightly. You work to 16. Yeah, get your rest, my friend. Go, go, go. You can, you can watch this on your, on your break days. Yeah, you're good, brother. Thank you for what you do, too. We love you, man. I like doing Russian military. Yeah, I do, too. I, I, I really want to do. I know, actually, if Rick's still around, I don't know if he's still watching the game, but um, he did a superb, I think, MI-26 a couple years ago. So I'm going to tap some dark over this medium that I've got down. So that was my medium batch. I'm just put a little bit more of my dark batch around this. This kind of exposed, broken fender area. Just kind of adding some. It's a little bit like a like a pigment speckling. Just gently rotating it. I got to be careful now. I can't breathe or sneeze around this thing because that's loose pigments around there. So this is kind of just speckling some dark a little bit in there. Give it a little bit, kind of a variety. Oops. Kind of getting some. So that's putting dry pigments on dry pigments. I do this quite a bit. Put this brush safely away for now. The lid's back on. Uh, do you paint whether the road wheels on the other side? Yeah, I do usually so. And you see how the, the model's positioned like this? What I normally would do is I would get all those bottom sides right now underneath down there. I'm just not going to do it because it just takes up stream time and it's kind of wasted. <laughs> like nobody cares. Like what you're going to see is not anything special. This is more important. But I would put those down there as well. Usually is what I do when the, when the model's like this because now's the opportunity. Hey, Michael, how are you? All right. So I've got my thinner. We're going to put some light dropper. 
some thinner in this guy. I got a little bit of thinner in the, the, the little deal. Okay, let's start over here. So this is where I like to really use the capillary action a lot. Just gently put a drop down in areas. Just kind of get it going a little bit. Don't let it fall and splash. And just real gently squeeze one drop out, let it soak in. Use under the fender a lot. See how that kind of bled into that? I need my eyeballs too, because I can't see. <laughs> yeah, you can take this to whatever degree you want to take all that too, by, by the way, Zal. If you like, I don't really weather the bellies too much anymore. Like you will never see it. I'm never flipping the model over. I'm never going to take a picture of it. And it's so low to the ground. In fact, I lowered this one too, by the way. So the Tamiya Stug 3B, this kit in particular, has adjustable front suspension arms. And you could, you could, it's for posability on dioramas, but I've got kind of a, I know the vehicle really well, if that makes sense. And in the Russian Barbarossa campaign of when the Stug B was really highly used, suspensions wear out pretty fast and they get real saggy and they get real droopy of all the extra weight, armor, ammo, fuel. They get kind of, a, there's a lot of photos where they're kind of a nose down hot rod. And I know me and a few other modelers really like that look because, you know, lower and shit's kind of what I'm all about. <laughs> I love the, all my cars are lowered too, by the way. So I'm just carefully putting the thinner around all that dry pigment area. And it'll, it'll reconnect to the pigments underneath as well in terms of binding and everything. And I'm just touching the, the, the suspension arms. I'm trying not to actually touch the pigments themselves that I put down. The fresh stuff. So this is just carefully going, oops, my hands, my big my meat paws in the way. Just real careful, taking my time. Let that soak in real good. And what I'm trying to do with this is, is capture that texture. You know, that's why that's why I don't flood flood this with any kind of like I don't overdo it. I really try to like let that soak in because you'll get that little gritty texture. And that's that's the money shot there. That's that's what you really are after. You can use the bottom edge of the hole too. Just missed. <laughs> it's running down the bottom. Oops. Yeah, I dropped that one. That was too high up. So you can kind of see how it starts to soak in. I'm, I'm get, getting it all kind of wet, but it, but see how it's like this over here is probably, I have to be careful. That's almost too much thinner in there. But we can get the side of this tow hook area because that is an exposed missing fender that that side will actually get splashed on quite a bit. Side of the driving light. There it goes. It's methodical and therapeutic, but it's the, the, the results are, are worth this trouble. The second layer of pigments really gives you that depth. Just trying to get some of it. Just kind of watch it. You can see right in there. Let it see how it's starting to slowly soak in. It'll that'll all absorb in there. And anything that gets on the contact of the road of the tires and stuff, I'll, I worry about that after we're all done because it's just going to keep happening. So that's the like you clean them up at the end. That you lowered the tone of the <laughs> PP. <laughs> I did. Yeah, we had a good time. I I think as you guys caught that, I I had actually never talked to Martin one to one. I knew Adam for for a long time. I've known Adam for 15, 20 years, um, but I had never talked to Martin. It looks like I got that all pretty good. Let me get this front turn roll a little better. I'm leaving some of these uh, pigment speckles kind of on here and we'll use them. Some of this overthrow dust. Just kind of tapping a little bit of the fluid of the thinner out. 
I don't want to flood these roadways. Just kind of lock in some of the pigment dust that happened. Okay. Get that guy out of there. So I kind of actually gently blow on this. See what's loose. Looks like I got all of it. Okay, we can probably dry that now. That's probably hair dryer ready now. And that again is a refresher on pigments. That's a second layer. You can see we've got some nice tone. Now it looks really cool this way. <laughs> Unless I put a, a gloss varnish in there, it will not look that way when we dry it. It's gonna lighten up considerably. Um, do you post pictures of your cars, especially the golf? Ah, uh, no, not really. It's beat. My friends call it goldenrod. It is, it's paint job is beat to shit. I'll tell you, I'll put some in my stories for you, Zal. For tomorrow I'll, I'll put some of my cars up in my stories for you you can see it they're cool i love them both they're my babies everyone's like why do you got two cars well i rent i don't have a house so that's the all the property i own so i'm keeping both of them <laughs> i had this argument with my my family they're like, why don't you just sell and get a new car I'm like well that's a car payment number one which i'm not paying for i think the average car payment in the united states is 400 a month 500 a month yeah we're not doing that and i love them they're fun to drive they don't cost me anything Although the BMW is getting a uh, uh, new master cylinder in a couple weeks. Had to make that appointment. Uh, do you ever do figures? Uh, Scotty, I've, I've done figures on occasion. They're not my favorite. And like a lot of stuff where we suck at, I don't like to do them. <laughs> so no, not very many, but I have done them in the past. Yeah. Uh, most of my stuff is, uh, most of my models are standalone. That's my, like my style, if you will. But I've thrown a figure or two on occasion. Occasionally. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this bad boy. I'm gonna start drying this off stream a little bit, off the screen a little bit. I was letting the everything soak in real good. Uh, this will dry dead matte as matte as matte can be dead, Sylvain. This will be the deadest matte you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I've had about two dozen VWs over time, I'm guessing. Art Gumpla. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a big VW guy. Old VW, the, the new stuff drives me nuts. It's just lame. So this hair drying takes a little bit of time. Nothing to look at on stream except some old tracks. I love that screenshot here. There you go. I'll, I'll focus for you guys so you can see that. Show you what I mean. The cautionary tire. Okay. Just drying the pigments. Hold on, I'm almost kind of. They're about halfway dry. And this is a look I've actually tried to capture before. It's, it's quite hard. Take some some gloss varnish. But this kind of half dry pigment look. That's where we're at right now. Let me keep going a little bit longer. kind of the, the, how, how much of a difference that was that's making already it'll dry considerably lighter and then we'll get some of these kind of darker in here a little bit we'll kind of stay and that's what i want to work with because all this also remember too is when this when this guy goes goes sideways all that goes right in the shadow you you'll actually have a really tough time seeing that uh for our spirit you plan to do more sm Pro yeah absolutely arno that's that's going to be a core it's a core mainline product for us we have a lot more coming. We have three more coming this year, and then we'll have um, 
probably two or three a year if things stay smooth and easy and, and we get on schedule again for 2022 and beyond. So we'll be, especially in a world of drones, yeah. Question is the air dryer, does not blow any pigment. No, because so Sylvain, what I, obviously what they, they were wet, what that does is that that keeps them, and I let that soak in a little bit. And it's kind of because paint, these are paint pigments, once the thinner comes into that, it starts to bind it in a way. So no, they don't blow away. That's why you do that. That's why you do it in that process. But see, I've captured the texture. I want that I want that dried on mud buildup texture. That's really hard to do any other way. Matt Hill, guess we have. Yeah, we're adding pigments, another layer of pigments to the stug. And we're gonna we're gonna put some some grease and grime in here. Grease and grime on the um Yeah, it's gonna the best view is gonna be this way for you guys. So we'll leave it we'll leave it this view. No problem. Okay, back to the oils. Yeah, let me so you put my little mug back up there, but we can so I've got my oil palette right up here. This is what my little station looks like. So we're gonna, we'll continue on. We've got some previous, I did a little bit of work in here. And then what we did on the train with the pigments on that. Reach over there without bumping and knocking shit over. I'll just show you how it still looks. Whoops, I did knock the stug over. So we'll go. So you can see that still looks pretty solid. Nope. I hate when it does that. Switch lenses. So we'll put that on the, on the stug wheels. You missed it. Okey -doke. Yeah, this lazy Susan's a little big for camera work, but it's very it's very effective for holding the model for me, which is why I like using these. Usually it's without the camera, it's no big deal. Uh, Austin said, first time to see this stuff live. It's a totally different experience from seeing pre-recorded videos. Yeah, this is a very different experience. A lot of guys make fun of it a little bit, like it takes forever, but I'm like, yeah, this is this is one to one. This is where it's not chopped up. You guys can see, and I do chop it up because I can't, I can't show you, you know, six hours of weathering the whole side. So I do piece it up a little bit, but um, I'll be doing some stuff in the future where you'll probably see some scenes from some of these videos back into an edited content too. So I do have to do some of that too. Uh, and also if you guys are not familiar, um, tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll, I'll rewatch the video and I'll put timestamps. And when you click the description to show more, you'll see the blue timestamps and those are chapter marks and you can dip to uh, like I'll put in here when I switch to the Stug is like demo number two and then we'll put demo two pigments and then demo three uh, the, the oil work on the thing so you can zip through and watch this stuff separately and all the videos are like that you can go back and check them all out that way so that makes it easy for you guys to watch post haste yeah, on my budget. yeah. what are we talking about not on my yeah nothing's on my budget <laughs> and no budget for anything anymore um, did I miss anything? Wishful we'll thinking. I'm not sure. Feasible design, especially in the world of drones. I missed that. I don't know what that kind of, you guys are chatting about. Something. Probably Uber copyrights. But yeah, copyrights are a bitch, at least in the West. First time to see. Okay. Now, yep. Uh, question How uh, are these new brushes? Yep, they're identical. They're literally identical, Michael. They work perfect. Live stream is the game changer. This is it, man. We have shifted the bar. Okay, back to my oils, my color brushes. One of these Jimmy Jams is a, is a blender. We'll use this dude. So we've got color brushes. So again, it's the same general color palette with the tans and the browns and everything, but we're just gonna grease some of these hubs up. Some of these hubs. <laughs> Here, let's go back to this. I've done the solo view. It's a little bit bigger for you guys. Yeah, it's still air drying. Those pigments are still air drying a little bit. And I use the colors to represent moisture. So the darker patches will be kind of a wet, greasier patch of mud and we'll, we'll get up to it when we get up to it. But that's the layering of this. This is really nice because I would like, I wish it would stay like that. I wish it would stay, it won't. It's gonna lighten up even more, but that light tone from the first go around and then the newer value of mediums in here and then a little bit of the dark. But that kind of gradation is, is you could almost airbrush that if you wanted to. You could do some stuff. And one of these days I kind of will. But yeah. Okay.
So because the, the dust tones are already down with the pigments, with the oils, I can go right to the dark tones and the grease tones. Tighten up everything here so you can see that. Got to put everything like right on top of each other. So I'm just getting some, some medium brown color right now. It's kind of my, uh, what is that? Burnt umber and raw umber. Those are the two dark medium browns. Let's just kind of go back in here. I'm just going right around the hub on this guy because it's already got a little bit of color. This one had a little bit of black on it. And this is super simple, putting a pin wash down. This is a little bit on the wet side. You can see the thinner in that. It's not super juicy, but it's it's also kind of flowing pretty well. All of this is on the wheels is, is bone dry. Nothing's moving around. So all that pigments has been locked into place. None of that's going anywhere. You'd have to really scrub to get that off, to be honest with you. Yeah, and what I'm hoping to do with this because of the unedited and the way this all works is, so this is one of the rebuild projects where this was an old eBay model that I bought built up that I'm going to turn into a real project. And you guys are going to see that, or you have seen it so far. Like I haven't done anything much on its own outside of the stream. So trying to save all this for you guys so you can kind of see. And then over time, maybe another month or two, this thing will finally dial in. So when I try to do the hubs a little bit different between each other. So like the first one here on the back has a little bit more dirt. This one has a little bit less. So I'm kind of playing with kind of my, I'm just kind of going with the feel for this. I'm not, I could be looking at references, um, but I'm kind of cheating in terms of, I, I know this subject pretty well. And that's okay too. You know, you'll get to the, you'll get to subjects where you guys just know this stuff. All right, so let's take the, let's see, I gotta pick a wheel here. The number two wheel in line there from this one here, we're gonna juice up like the train. So let's get a little bit on this guy. So this is just gonna get a little bit of in this guy, not too much. And then this dude, let's go to town, my friends. So I'm putting a really dark brown around that. You guys can see that, okay, cool. I'm making sure it's got a little enough thinner in there. Gonna pull a few streaks out. Kind of naturally let that bleed through the, the rim there, the edge of that rim. Okay. And you'll see this pretty often this in most uh, military vehicles of this ilk. It's Hetzers, Stugs, Panthers, Tigers. You'll get one or two that just the seals are blowing. This thing's probably the first one's a little bit obvious, but I'm going to try to use this first road wheel as a replacement and keep it a little bit like fresher looking because of the, the, the missing fender. Maybe that was a, a thrown track or maybe they hit a mine. I don't know. And it was replaced. So we're going to we're going to work with the first one as more of a fresher wheel. So the second one's getting the love. That's how I decided that we did that just now. <laughs> that was a live stream decision. So I got a little bit of a second streak. OK. Now I'm going to get a little bit of black in there, too, before we switch to the, the pigment. So there's a little black oil. So this is this is a blown hub seal. So I like the contrast of the second. Yeah, that's looking pretty solid. Let me set these down for a second. Let me wipe off this guy because that's a juicy mess of love right there. All right. Some of these brushes, when you this is the point of the of, of OPR when you when you've been doing this for 20, 30 minutes to an hour, where the brushes they're all perfect right now. Like all my color brushes and everything are perfect. So we got the black smoke pigment. This is the classic color. Any black pigment or dark gray or anything of this any of this color way will work. So I'm getting a little bit on the brush. This little pigment brush I've got, a little tiny little brush, little, little dude. Zoom zoom. Anyway. So we're going to take a little bit of pigment, maybe a little bit more. Go right in the wet oil. It's going to absorb out. So 
just putting it right in that juice right there. But real specific. And this will also immediately fix it in place. Oops. So you get any like that where the, where the black plate just let, don't do anything. Don't touch it. Just keep going. Let's build up this black kind of grimy, dusty, leaky hub. Okay, so the loose stuff right now, just get in there and blow gently. Just kind of get that black dust out of there. I'm just kind of judging my work here, making sure everything's looking pretty good. Put a little bit more around here. So now, let this pigment dude away for a second. Let me put the lid back on. I'm trying to be real careful. Any idea if they add a road wheel still? Yep, that does happen quite a bit. I thought about that, Zal, doing a red primer. It's a little bit of a cliche. It's kind of, I don't do a lot. It's, it is kind of more on the cliche side of life of things with this. Pigments are stuck to that. That's right. So now this is the oil brush with the color on it. So I actually put a little bit more brown in there. Reset the brush a little bit more to a brown tone. Go more with the burnt umber side of life. Rotten is more of a black brown. Okay, now we can dry that bad boy. Do this off camera. So there's our there's our blown hub seal on that guy. Just putting a little bit more brown along the edges. And this type of effect too, you, you can kind of play with it over time. Let it kind of do its thing, you know, judge it, come back and do it and, and, and really kind of play with it a little bit more. I like the kind of central clean uh, hub cover itself. General, these pigments these are pretty dry now. You can start playing with them. You can start putting oils and stuff on them. My little flick stick here. You can come in and you can't really speckle on the trains on the trains too much. They don't really get a speckly effect, but the armor you can. You can come in here with some kind of brown, greasy oil and just start to speckle a little bit more. Oops, keep hitting the microphone. Right above the the thinner. The speckling of the oils into this right directly into the pigments gives you a little extra layer of staining. You 
can get a little bit more aggressive with the thinner. And get right in there. I'm just getting a little bit on the road well. Kind of getting a little bit of a leaky shock absorber in there too. Starting to build kind of just a gritty, grimy, dirty look. Now, I usually don't usually go uh, light colors on top of dark, but just put a little bit more of a lighter brown. Trying to get a little bit of a softer transition. That's why I was letting it dry a little bit, just kind of see what it was doing. Just put a little bit of light, dusty back into that black pigment pigments. right down in there and this stuff you can you can kind of draw it in a little bit just gently tapping around some of those stains and the pigments are really fixed in there good they're not really going anywhere so you're okay with this I wouldn't put my finger in that because that'll crush it but the brush won't uh, mess anything up so I'm just going under all these bump stops a little bit kind of a wetter greasier situation whether that's moisture or oil or whatever combination yeah, so that kind of... and you can see how i move this thing around I, I you know i i really get into kind of being able to do it this way this is my normal process when i've got it on the table i just don't have a camera with it but i, I will spin it like this because you really need to get all the angles. You really need to observe, you know, the, the, your viewing angles. Some of the stuff you can kind of vi miss visually, but it's, um, but you can kind of, you can, like my, my viewpoint is kind of like I'm looking down in there to make sure I'm getting everything kind of correctly. And this prevents me from, from having to, to hold them. I know there's like the octopus and some other stuff, but I, I actually prefer like how I can do this. And the angle it's and i like that it's low too the way my chair's set up and everything 40 foot how are you bud late to the party but happy to be here same here happy you are here welcome welcome everybody welcome what time's it back east it's, it's eight so it's only 11 p.m okay 10 p.m midwest 11 p.m we're good so most of this you may never see anyway once this drive sprocket goes on Draw some little verticals here, just through the mud. There's a little lip there. We can we can we can punch this up. And I'm not super concerned under the fender itself. Um, you can actually get in there and do all that. I know when the tracks go on this model you're going to be hard pressed to ever see that even even if you really get in there i'm not this isn't going to be a judge model or anything so i'm not going to this is a demo piece for teaching so you can do underneath the fenders you can plug all those those ejector marks if you want i'm just it's a demo model i would take it more seriously if it was competition but it's just i got other things to do <laughs> you know what i'm saying fellas Just 
because I think the heart of this is really showing this this stuff. So I'm just kind of getting a dark wash around the, the seal of that drive sprocket. It'll all dry up a little. It won't look quite that juicy. And if you wanted it wet like that, if you wanted a, a wet, dry look, just add a little gloss uh, agent. You can add linseed oil straight into that. That'll stay wet for a month or so. You can add a gloss varnish. I, the thing with gloss varnish is to me with this, if you wanted to keep that, is it does dry to a hard edge. So you have to kind of really practice and play with it to kind of diffuse it out. But you can see in here now, this is all starting to dry. You're gonna do what I do at this point in time. Let me just find a spot here. I'm gonna pick it up from the other wheels. The unwet. I gotta dry this with the hair dryer. I've got some on the on the thing. in the fender clean that up I must have accidentally hit that you guys got to tell me when this stuff in so I got a big dark oil spot there I must have touched it by accident just kind of left it out a little bit that's all okay all right back to the hair dryer are you using the fix your hair dryer rig for purpose of the screen this no this is how I do it Austin I just have a camera here, but what you're seeing is how I do it. This is exactly how I work on my things. And the hair dryer just speeds all this up. Otherwise, you're just going to be waiting for waiting for pigments to dry that are wet will take a long time. The oils dry pretty quickly, but the the wet pigments do take some time. So a hair dryer is, is this. I couldn't model without a hair dryer now, to be honest with you guys. This is normally, this is my normal process. Where'd that go? Which is why I like showing it. So that's that with the right. I'm, I'm actually trying to keep the clean parts kind of cleaner, if that makes sense. Because it'll be part of the overall scheme. So I'm gonna keep bumping this guy. It is right in my face. So now I'm just going up on some of the tire edges a little bit, just cleaning them up. This one here's got a little sloppy oil thing on that. And you can you can see, I never even actually painted the tires like a rubber or anything. They just look fine to me. I'm like, I'm totally cool with what I see. So this is me just going through a little bit, just kind of touching up my work. I'm not super worried about the contact patches just yet. Again, the tops of the rubber tires and the contact patches, once I get the track set up and everything done, ready to go, I, I start to really focus on that towards the end. So right now I'm just, anything kind of like shitty, I'll clean up a little bit. I'm not super worried about them though. I could even come back with paint and, and put like a fresh rubber tone over that, to reset the tires and, and actually redo the tires if I wanted to, because they will actually clean up pretty well when, when this is a running tank. Uh, are you are you uh, what, are you going to finesse that tank or use it for? Uh, this will not be published in a book per se. Uh, you might see pictures somewhere, but this is for the stream. All the stuff that you see, nothing I'll be doing on the streams will be for the books, if that makes sense. I am parched. Like the, yeah, it did blue hard. That that is a busted hub seal, my friend. But it's the same kind of idea with the with the with the black pigments in the in the oil paint in there. Yeah, so I'm just going through and kind of checking the work right now. But you can see from just from the shadows how much that disappears too. Once this, and those are, these are winter kettens, so that these these guys stick out. These guys will stick out even more so than a regular stuck track. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna lose so much of this visually. So I'm cheating a little bit of it, That's, but I'm also familiar enough. You know, so you're gonna you're gonna get, you know, that track's gonna that track's gonna stick out to there. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot of it. To even see that, you really have to get a light and a camera up in there. So that's why it's a little. You can go more contrast on the on this kind of stuff, which is why I do it this way. So I'm kind of this is kind of the 
If I learned anything from Verlinden, because I don't like the white dry brushing, is the fact that he cheated a lot of stuff for the sake of visual uh, acuity for you guys, so you guys can see stuff. That's part of what his whole process was, Shep Payne and, and Verlinden in particular. So I kind of do it in a different way, but the same concept a little bit. I, I don't really use a lot of rust pigments, Leo, to be honest with you. But you can. It's just my process with painting rust is just a little bit different, and I just prefer that look to pigment rust, rust pigments. You know, my little wheel hub brush is, is juicy good. <laughs> it's getting everywhere. I, mean, I got to clean up a little bit. This is a messy process, too. This is this does get a little bit on the... Uh, okay, so let's, let's rotate. Let's zoom out a little bit. Here. Okay, so I'm on the nose now. Let's see here if we can have it. sponges here and kind of make a little prop. Alright. So let's pull in these guys. Do some more pigment work. Just needs to stay that way for a little bit. We're gonna do some stuff right around in here. Oh, you're totally fine with questions, guys. If you guys ask questions, yeah, Austin, if like just rereading your question a little bit, but yeah, you're totally fine. I don't mind answering questions multiple times. I know there's transitions of everybody. All right, so take this little dude. This is a little bit different because this is, it's so smooth right in here. Actually, you can see why it needs to be vertical. Let's see if I can get this on the nose a little bit more. So I'm going to adjust a little bit, go to go almost so it tips over. It's a little bit of a risk. There it goes. We'll have to build this up a little bit carefully. Takes a little bit of delicate, just trying to get the pigments in. I'm trying to get it in and around the exhaust. This is kind of delicate work. Like I, I whisper like, <laughs> uh, The nose and tails of the armor is a little bit of a tricky to, to do this kind of stuff too. But you're seeing the, how it's done. Just gently crushing on the exhaust a little bit. And this is kicking down that, you see how it kicks down that rust? Um, but I'm not trying to overdo it. And I'm trying not to breathe on this right now. Okay. This is layer one. Oops. This is, is things get really messy with this stuff. I should usually have all this covered up. I'm trying to be kind of cautious. Okay, back to the eyedropper with the fix with the, the thinner for the fixer. So I got a little thinner, and that's mission models because the mission models paint, so mission models thinner. Same idea. There's some life color, but that's okay. It's all the same. Same kind of just carefully. I'm trying to keep the texture. I'm trying not to drop the the liquid onto that too much. I don't want this too wet. Like I don't want this all dripping off or anything. So it's kind of a delicate balance of. But I'm using kind of the non-pigmented surfaces to, to get the the liquid to come out of the, um, the eyedropper. for 
waiting for the tank to fall. <laughs> I can feel it shifting a little bit. That's a big drop. But this, I just want to make sure I get all the dry stuff on the surface, kind of something to grab it. Like right in here. So what I'm going to do while it's still wet. This is a little bit of a trickier process. Process. I'm just going to reset the model a little bit. Okay. We're in a delicate mode. <laughs> Don't anybody breathe. Okay, back to the pigments. Get my pigment brush again. So now while that's wet, it's just a little bit easier this way. Kind of halfway on there and then halfway not, and then come back up and build up some opacity. Fill some of those spots up a little bit. So I'm still in the light batch, and we'll switch to the darker colors here in a sec. So that thinner fixture on the, the th surface will capture this. See how it's starting to soak, soaks it back in a little bit? So let me grab the, in the medium. So this is a little bit darker range of tones. And it's all explained in the pigment uh, video too, if you guys are new to this. So these little bit darker pigments. And don't worry about the exhaust pipe and stuff. We can clean those back out. That's no big deal. I'm trying not to cover the, the exhaust up too much. See, that's what happens when you touch them. See how it kind of crushed right there? And it looks like it got crushed. It kind of doesn't fit, but we can, a little texture in there, problem solved. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of the thinner fixer. Just fairly carefully. Kind of just let the drop come out of that eyedropper. It's almost hovering in midair until it's grabbed by the, by the surface. I'm using two hands here to be really delicate. I have to dry this pretty quick because it's a lot of thinner on the surface. So with this operation, what this does is it, it lets you have that, that gritty texture, splattered texture look without, we're not to the splatters yet, but this is kind of the, the precursor. Like if you looked in the tank art books at like, you know, the back of the, I'm almost ready. I can I can almost pick this up and dry it. I think I got all the loose stuff. So blow on that quickly. Just knock all the loose stuff off. Okay. Take it down. Okay, I have to go off camera for a second. Because all that loose stuff is just gonna blow around. So I'm kind of drying from the top down so that it, it flows the liquid down vertically. Just see, <laughs> you can't see it, but just, you know. So here you can see it as it's starting to dry now. As you can see the light, tail. oops, I'm touching the other side. Don't do that, Michael. So it's starting to dry, getting kind of a, see this is how we, we work around. So we've got this side kind of going pretty well. Looks like it looks like I got a little boo-boo there. I got to clean that up. And the lights kind of, the dark, this way I don't like the night streams as much because my lighting's a little bit more harsh, if you will. So let me clean up that Eiler wheel. So you can see right there. And that's me being a little clumsy. That looks like I hit it with an oil brush or something. It's fixable. I'm talking about that meat stain right there. <laughs> that ain't supposed to be there. That was not intentional, my friend. Just working that. I don't know, I must have touched it by accident. I must have got really sloppy with some shit. 
or it's, or it's speckled out. I didn't see it. So I'm kind of brushing center out. So it's kind of spun out. I guess is this move. It's going to filter that white a little bit too. It's going to kind of darken it all up. That actually gonna look half bad. I'll live with that. <laughs> I, I can survive that. And that's a happy, that's a Bob Ross. There's a happy accident. There you go. There's a mistake that happened. I didn't see it. I didn't mean to do it. It effed up. Um, but it turned out to be kind of a cool little effect. So we'll just leave that dude right there. So back to back to this stuff here. Prop this back up. Let me zoom out a little bit. Everybody good? How's everybody doing? It's 8.15 here. Okay. okay. So now... Well, that's kind of half dry a little bit. Get this shit out there. Okay. Right, that at least keeps them from getting clogged up. Okay, so that's good. That's good. Question, do you use any rust pickings? Nope. Uh, yeah, so we're, so so to your, again, to loop back to you, Leo. So from the previous stream on the Stug, which was two or three streams ago, uh, that's a life color rust set. So that's a painted rust. And that you can see, I think that looks fairly authentic. And, and rust pigments, see how the dirt kind of looks gritty and textured? That's gonna be out of scale for, for, believe it or not, exhaust systems don't go to that level of texture. Most people kind of think it does. It actually kind of doesn't. So I like my rust painted. It gives a little bit more authentic look, if you will. And then the dust on top of it gives you the texture of the earth texture. So I think that looks pretty, I'm happy with that in terms of the realism level. So that's why I don't use the rust pigments for this kind of stuff. I just thought they were too much when I tried them. I thought the paint works a little better. Now this is just a clean brush with thinner. And this is actually the oil thinner, believe it or not, because I'm trying not to streak the mud too much. Just want a little bit of that love of just coming vertical down. Just kind of blowing on a little bit, let that dry. Because I like this kind of thrown up dusty mud look itself. Table, push the oil palette off. Stick that back down. Okay. So let's add a little bit more streaky tone tones. Anyone else just realized that they were holding their breath? <laughs> yeah, no. it, it's, it's. I was too, Darren. Trust me, I was. This is this is some of that kind of butt puckers happen a little bit. So I've got. Let me zoom out just a little. You can kind of see the look, the setup here. So again, to everybody, this is actually how I like when you have to do this area and you have to see it, you have to get it the right way. You need those pigments to stick the certain way. This is actually how I, you have to do this kind of stuff to get that horizontal, um, to get this part up horizontal so that everything stays that way. And then once you get the fixer on there, the way I did with the thinner, that'll hold now. So now I've tilted it down a little bit into an angle. It's more of a eyeball angle. And now I can come in and now I'm gonna do some of the little bit more oil work on the, on the exhaust part. And you can see if you go back and watch the, the the painting stream of the exhaust how bright it was and i knew going in we're gonna we're gonna mess this shit up so we're gonna calm it way down so it's not gonna be like bright orange rust in the field like that's not what i was going for so just just i knew that going in yeah don't want to think you what you guys thinking i was kind of going nuts I'm actually going to go with kind of a my rust tones on this model in general. Like if you looked at the if you look at the tracks here, like there are much darker brown grittiness to it. That's kind of our rust tones. So not a lot of bright 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 oh, not a lot of bright orange. Jesus man. So 
So now I'm just applying some darker browns into this a little bit. Not much, it doesn't need a lot. Some so it's just kind of a dark brown oil stain on a backup and really just metal. So the same basic principle with the exhaust pipes. A little brown thinner, I mean brown oils with a little thinner. It's probably too much thinner, but okay, getting some getting some black pigments. This little guy again. carefully. That one's a little too wet. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. Could be delicate with it. I don't want to push too hard or knock that. I don't know how stable the model. Yeah. Just want that black pit of hell exhaust. Kind of that rusty dry. Okay. This is the messiest session <laughs> so far. I'm making a, a physical mess. Yeah, and you, again to the to that comment who said, who mentioned that uh, there was a lot of YouTube bits we were to lesser ball. Yeah, you know I noticed that too, Scotty. Yeah, I I'm supposed to be set up at, at 1080p, so I've noticed in some other videos I shoot at 1080p. I don't have 4K setup yet, but and the 4K fed 4K. So you know, and I know a lot of you guys that vid know video know this stuff, but even though it doesn't come out at 4K on your end, on the YouTube end, the quality is sharper because there's more information in there. So it is an improvement in quality. So as soon as I can move to the 4K, uh, I'll get that care. I have it all planned out. It's just just the grand thousand dollars of money I don't have right now. So you can see I missed some spots like the idler wheels and I can, this is all stuff I can go back. Because you work in the section principle, all of this can be joined together, if you will. But I just wanted to show you kind of like the weathering of this area. Let's see if we can zoom out a little, little zoom out here. Get off of this here. See if we can, well, I might have to hold this. Because, yeah. It's a little bit difficult to showcase on camera this way where I can rotate it, but. So you can see I missed some of the areas. Like I need to pull that wheel off and, and get behind there, but that's no big deal. I just do the same things I did tonight. So that's building that up slowly. And I like how we're starting to build up the overflow on the, on the exposed headlight over there. And we'll rotate the dirt and dust up to the top section later. I'm gonna sh I'll, switch, I'll shift to the shipping container. So this is this is adding layer by layer piece by piece. And I find this just a lot more of a rewarding and enjoyable process to be truthful with you guys. Like I like the fact that I've got that back end kind of 75% done, that makes sense. And then, you know, obviously I can come down and, and tie in the bottom part, kind of tie in the other areas. Uh, and that's how I'd work around this, you know, if, if I'm doing that. See, that turned out pretty good. That little yucky part, fix that little bad boy. 
I love the blown seal there. That turned out pretty solid. Try to get a little bit of kind of residual, kind of older look in combination. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that came out pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Doing okay, my friends. If I am okay to say I like my own stuff sometimes. <laughs> Sounds so pretentious. All right, let's switch to the green shipping container. Hopefully you guys are, are we getting some good info. books guys hold on a second <laughs> crack myself up so this is painted painted rust in here you can see this is that's all painted see i think i think that's uh good enough in terms of like the quality of the paint job in terms of a you know paint versus a rust pigment i find that the paint you can just get a little bit better look out of that that's 48 scale so that's pretty small and this guy here let's see what we did on the back of this whoops Okay, so this up in whoops, zoom, buddy. Let's see if I got a more rear end shot on this guy. Do I? There we go. So this one here, you can just kind of comparison between what I did earlier. So, but that's all. See, but see how you get that kind of the break in texture between the splattered mud and stuff. You can control because certain surfaces will strangely in real life don't get any mud either. Because once this is all kind of going, it kind of builds up, but it never catches some of the spots because of the throw up angle of how it's kind of doing it. But we'll 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 pull this up and over in the next few streams when we get back onto that. So you can kind of see what this is like if you guys have these and we'll do some snow, too. We're going to do some snow stuff. And again, this is one of my this was one of my favorite exhausts. That's all paint. Leo, you can see why I, my preference is definitely on the paint side of life for that. You can get some nice paint, but the same to get that all this texture right in here. What you just saw with the tilt up of the model and everything like that, I had to take the gun out really carefully. You know, lean in on its nose. And all this, all this in here, it's all that you just exactly how I did it, like all that right in there. So that's exactly the, the stuff that we were doing. So these are I'm trying to show you the one to ones on the on the processes, and you can see here too the tracks. See how the shitty they look right here, all that spottiness. But once you go to the pigments and get the other stuff going on, that all disappears. So this is this. We'll go from this what we have now. And we'll go to this pretty soon too, and all this kind of stuff. So I just want to show you it's sort of correlation between, you know, what's going on and in, in, in how we're doing the, the colors and, and where they're coming from. You know, you know, like the speckling. There's your speckling right there in the front of that. You know, get those up on there. Get the dust up on there. Work light to dark. Mount those up on there, then get a little of the speckling. Gives you that kind of gritty little stains and spots, and, and that's how you'll do that. It was one of my favorite. I really enjoyed the Nashorn. This was a this was a fun part. That's why I like my tight my tracks tight. Just gives it a good sharp look to it. Not super loose and crazy, but you can see here. So there's your yeah exact same process. You guys got to see that. So and you can see it goes from the from the clean. You got to tilt that up. Get that all up in there. Yeah, it's 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 fun, but it's that was that's that's a little bit on the hold your breath, <laughs> you know, don't breathe. Okay, we'll do a little bit more and we'll call it a night. Everybody, any questions? I miss anything? I haven't really paid attention, you guys. I've <laughs> been ignoring all of you. Yeah, let's put my mug back up here. Okay, I'm still here, still me. Uh, general question: When I was a kid, uh, what'd you ask? Where'd that go? That moved. When I was a kid, I relaxed building kits. Now at 28, return to the hobby and find myself in a lot more enjoyable, stressful process. Is that common for you? Uh, the challenge, Austin, is is what that is. You know, it's it's risk it's risk reward, um, and that's that's a lot of um, what we do. And what I'm trying to teach you guys is, is the management of that. You know, of, of each part, everything that every brushstroke is a risk reward, and being able to control that with with the processes and, and coming out with the reward side. Do you paint your brake lights or just suggest them? I paint them. Uh, they'll be painted. 
I don't know what the, that one, I'll go back and usually that's one of the final things too. Lenses are towards the end. So I'll use the transparent reds like, um, and you know, look at museum pieces that I think when I traveled to Munster in Germany, uh, you looked at, I looked at a lot of the taillights because I wanted the CC and they, they're almost a black glass and you get a hint of green or a hint of red depending on the, which vehicles, but and some of the blues with the, with the clear tubes as well. So, but most of them are, are much darker than you think. They're not a, a bright kind of thing, but yeah, I do paint them. Um, and some of the kits have the clear parts, which makes it a little bit nicer. And the clear part, then you paint them up, just like the uh, vision ports, all that stuff. Um, yeah, is it? Yeah, is it not as sharp? Let's see if I can let me go here real quick. Let me check something, guys. Uh, camera mic, uh, general. Yeah, it says full. It says I'm re I'm pump putting out a full 1080p. Show advanced options. Yeah, it's all in high res for that. That's me. So let me check this one off. Hold on real quick. Let me check my camera settings on this camera. This is the hand camera. Show them advance. Yeah, they're coming out at 1080. It could be a, a, a feed end on, on your end or because I've got um, a four screen shared here, I can remove. Yeah, that's already, it's already out. Okay, so yeah, you're only getting the three. We should be okay. You're off to bed, Marino? You got it, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for swinging by. Yeah, it's not a perfect har harmonious thing, but that should look, that looks pretty sharp to me. I'm seeing that looks pretty sharp. Okay, so pull this over here. I think we're okay. We're doing all right. About two and a half hours. We've covered some ground with the trains. So you can see this is this area over here. This is what we did the last stream. So I, I carried over a little more of the coloring. So let me grab my brushes again. And this is the beauty of all this is it's just the ability to switch is so easy. I don't have to switch colors on the palette or anything because they're already they're already put down. So just my blender brush. I did make a mess. So <laughs> my desk is a shit show over here. Messy for me anyway. Pigments get everywhere. Okay, so we've got some color brushes. So let's put um, a few more stains on the top of this guy. So this is 187 shipping container, your standard 40 footer. Um, I put a little yellow patch there over the weekend. I've got a little bit of dust in here. Um, and what we did was on stream was I sprayed this kind of greenish tint, faded paint. We airbrushed that. And then we came in with some dust washes and some speckling and some stains and stuff. Uh, this is what they're making jokes of earlier in the stream. I can I see the tops of these out my window because uh, I'm on the sixth floor and they come through the city all day long. So let's just take in some techniques and we'll spend a little bit of time. So I'm kind of load. I'm getting a brush kind of set up here. So I wanted to see how dark that was. So one drove by and it had a big stain across the whole thing. But it was translucent. It was not like a black solid stain. Much larger. I actually went too small in some of the stains on top of this guy. I'm trying to get an angle so I don't keep hitting them. The microphone. It's kind of a really translucent wet brown. Kind of a, a drop of oil in the in the dust, if you will. Switch the blender brush.
soften some of these kind of that capillary bleed. like that too much but that's okay didn't quite do what I wanted it to dry it down a little bit just didn't look like a stain <laughs> kind of looks like a mess it kind of does a little bit you can see there's a little bit of the, see the tide mark a little bit so it's too much thinner that's okay because what I'm gonna do here yes yeah, so I'm getting a lot of tide marks way too much it was too wet it was too much thinner so i've got a clean brush with thinner so i'm just going around the edges now just stippling that those tide marks yeah, it didn't quite look how i thought it'd be kind of a it almost would be better if there were pigments down and then put the oil into the pigments it doesn't look like an even stain per se so let me do this and switch to the green. Let me get a fresh brush. Do I have any brushes? Let's do this. This is working with sometimes when it goes this way. It doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't, I wanted that to be more of an even look to it. Yeah, I don't know if that'd be from my end, Corey, or if it was from, from another you know like a okay so i'm gonna take some green here kind of building up a darker version of this all of the yellow Fighting the wetness of this for something. It's not diffusing the way I want. I'm gonna soften that up a little bit. There it goes. So I've kind of put more of a fresher, worn paint look right there. Kind of soften that up a little bit. And this is why you have to have references. I'm doing this just on the fly. I'm kind of making shit up as I go. And it's not bad, but I tell you what, from what I've seen, it's not accurate. But I've got that darker stuff in there. It's too late now a little bit. So I gotta kind of work with it, which is okay. Cause you're not seeing perfection every single time, which is totally cool. You know, you know I'm not necessarily worried about that. I don't chase it and, and, and sometimes it doesn't quite go the way it's it's dirty grimy shitty looking but it's kind of not authentic either <laughs> my stain there is a little too splotchy it's not even enough kind of try to work with it a little bit like like something happened there just kind of tapping just kind of stippling and, and kind of diffusing it even a little bit more Where's my gray? Hold on. Let me switch color palette a little bit. I'm gonna pick up a little of the dark gray. Kind of a dark, it's the dark mud, but it's actually a dark gray. <laughs> Their color names. Not sure how those meetings were going at AK or at 502 when they were doing the color names. Just 
trying to even that stain out a little bit. It's actually working. <laughs> Yay! Okay, there you go. That's a little better. That looks more like what I thought. From a distance, that looks a little better. It's a little grainy up close, but not in a good way. Sorry, vocab question. Tide mark is what's happening. Okay, so let's see if do we still have one on here. Zoom, zoom. Focus. Okay, Austin, you can just see them. And what you're seeing, when you lay down enamel thinners or solvent thinners of this case, if you look where the brush tip is, you see right that little glint of sheen right in there? That's the edge of the thinner that is dried to a hard, like a watermark, and we call them tide marks. Like if, if water dried in the dirt and you get that little edge to it. I'm drawing, you guys can't even see me on screen. <laughs> there you go. So like, like if we can get an edge, it's called a tide mark. Yeah. And what you want is when you see them, you can see, see right there, right there, you don't want that. Those are bad. And you, the light will catch that and you're like, oh shit. And what you have to do is either dry it really fast, use less thinner, which I should have done. I had too, my, there was too much thinner on my brush. And then what you can do, blender brush a little bit of thinner on it's clean. Come back in here, see if I can do this. Kind of re-wet it a little bit and stipple this out. And it should make most of it go away. Some on each of these. Yeah, tide marks and ultra. So, so see how it's wet like that? Let's come in here with my. A little hair dryer. And if I did my job correctly, <laughs> my professional job, there we go. See how they're gone now? So this one's still a little on the wet side, which is fine, but there's no tide marks, there's no edges to it. But you can see right where my brush tip is. You can see how that's all cleaned up now. None of that glint is shine, sheen is gone. Uh, any of the other vendors I've been has carrying your books that you're aware of? Uh, Sprue Brothers, if they're there, they're gonna be the main ones. Um, if there's a company from Canada called Lightspeed, I don't know if they're selling, but they do distribute in North America, Lightspeed. Uh, Sprue Brothers, Kit Links, Loix Operation, if he's there. Uh, you're pretty close. As, yeah, fun with it. Yeah, no, I fixed. I, I saved it. <laughs> it was just kind of like it wasn't even looking, Corey. Like you know what I mean? Like I wanted. I saw it drive away, and like when you angle it like that, it looked kind of like that. Like as it was driving away, there was like this huge stain across the top. I wanted it. I wanted it more even. So my first attempt was a little splotchy, and that's because I was too thin. I should have gotten a little more even balance of, of color and thinner. So that's that's kind of what happened. It's still a little juicy juice in there, but that's okay. Yeah, it, looks, it actually looks pretty solid now. That's what I was kind of hoping for. That's kind of what you see. They're kind of clean, but they have these like random like spots or stains from just the being in the in the shipping yards or you know being moved around or you know stacked up and whatever but i do need to what i do need to do is the mount points where they stack on each other these four we have to rust those bad boys up so let's go in and make sure i've got one clean blender left that's a color brush it's a color brush okay let's do a little oil rusting Everybody good? Otherwise, we'll go. We'll go another five ten minutes. So my tide marks blow dry them, or, or you're gonna have to a little bit of both, Zhao. So I had to add a little uh, clean thinner on the blender and, and, and scrub it out, and then hair dry it. So it, it 
what you're doing is you're kind of re-wetting it so that that edge disappears and then you're quickly drying it so it cannot reset itself. What color mud pigments would you use dark brown pigments? It depends on how, like your KB1, you mean? Yeah, you have to kind of, the colors I'm using on the Stug are probably good enough, you know, kind of a medium brown. Russian earth's pretty rich, you know, you don't want to go too dusty, so you kind of a middle dark range. Um, the other informants, but my eyes can barely see. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting tired too, so yeah, off to bed, guys. Yeah, we'll wrap up here in a few seconds. Let me do some little bit of rust tones here. And These are the night streams are a little bit on the harder side. It's just late in the night for a lot of you guys. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of pure paint with some, go a little bit of an orangey rust tone first. My orange is just dry as poo. It never loads up. That, that tube is just not happy. Okay, so I've got, let's see if I can get a little focus. So it's kind of a medium rustish, not quite orange, but, but getting there. Not gonna zoom, come on, there we go. Okay, so just these little caps. Put down a lighter tone first. Try to get down in there. Do a little bit around it too, they'll knock, knocked up and, knocked up, they get knocked around. They'll get knocked up. They get knocked around. Kind of putting some fresh rush chips around them. I know I owe, I think John, I don't think John's in stream tonight, but I know one of the guys wants um, heavy rush streaks, like you see on the rail stuff. We'll do that in the future. I think we're all running out of gas. It's just kind of blending that back up a little bit. Yeah. This is almost dry blending brush, just using the thinner that was in there. Just kind of give like a worn rusty edge to that. Kind of a rubbed off chip look, you know, without it looking like a hard edge chip. So kind of clean my blending brush up a little bit. It was a little too dry. So this is to the like when I want to kind of move stuff around specifically, just a real, see that little bend of the nipple there, the tip there, that little bend right there, just kind of using that as a little finger, just gently scrubbing, scribbling, jiggity, jiggity, jiggity. Oops, didn't, it just went all soft. Okay, let's all read it. So what I did when it was, just kind of moved it around like that a little bit just to the back edge of that rusting and then kind of pulled it down and just kind of using a little bit of a coffee shake. You can see how it's kind of a nice little diffused. And that's working in scale. You can see it's a little wet. See how that you can see the sheen right there. So to prevent that from doing anything wrong, the little zap of the hairdryer. <clears throat> Yeah, you're welcome, Scotty. Thank you, guys. Any final questions here? I got that light rust down. We'll wrap up with the final brush strokes of the night with a little bit of a dark, get a little bit of raw umber on this guy. Really dry brush. Just kind of. Kind of dry brush. A little bit of darker rust. And that cuts down to that worn steel. Then you can come in here with a little. Just clean it up a little bit.
It's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> Believe it or not, that little bit right there, that's a good note to end on. Just a little bit of the edge resting right up there. Kind of the worn, got a little, little something mistake there and just turned that into a little bit of a scratch. And that's because I got all that light, lighter, dusty, green, yellowy chartreuse. And then that rust color just pops right up on top of that. So that's how you layer that stuff up over time. But yeah, this is just, you know, hitting that snizzle pie. That's a good note to end on. All right, everybody cool. Ooh, I'm tired. Are you looking for balancing your weathering or more building your techniques to lead the eye towards a particular signature or main feature of the model? I don't know, dude, dude, that's a huge question. You know what I'm saying? Like you're like, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to get to with this. I think you're trying to get too mental with like, it's always a reference. So there is, there is an end game with a reference. That's what you work towards. Now, I'm doing this on the fly because I'm kind of going off memory a little bit. But like with the train part earlier, it's 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 getting into where you, there's always a solution to your end game, and that's what this is, is. Is these little dudes, like just for example, you know, that's not being artistic. Those things get worn up on top because that's where all those containers stack up. So that's that's trying to apply. I saw the stain on a truck driving by that looked just like that. So there's always an end game. You know, the signature comes just from your, your own personal style a little bit, but that's just kind of, you know, you really, you really got to kind of, that comes from experience. You don't get your style in the first few models. It's going to take you a couple of years, truthfully, you know, it depends on how fast you work. You know, you have to master the techniques to kind of really come in and, um, yeah, we're not doing any Red Bulls. That's the end of my night, dude. <laughs> it's not, it's 9 p.m. here. I'm, I'm going to go watch uh, What If on Disney. Is the second episode out yet? That was really good. It depends on what you're looking for, Timothy. You're, you know, what are you, where, are you, where are you going with it? You know, kind of um, like what you, what level you're trying to achieve yourself personally. Are you going for gold medals? Are you going for just get better? You know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of that stuff. You know, but it, for me and for like a lot of the guys out there, you know, Martins and Adams of the world, it's it's taken. You've got to have an end game. You've got to have a vision. If you, it's just not a shit show, it's, you just not. I'm not jerking this off to jerk it off. Like I'm not doing that. This is all coming from, you know, studying all this stuff to a large degree, you know, so it's, it's, and that's, that's, that's the heart of it. And then from that, you tweak it into your, your personal motif, if you will, whatever it is that you're kind of looking for. Yeah. That's kind of how I do that. That's, it's a tough one. That's a, that's a real, you know, almost philosophical, you know, you're not sure where you're going with that. It, it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Cause all of it's relatable, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's the, like this thing here, you know, so this is if I'm going off of a, you know, like what they call the prototypes where I'm, I'm trying to really do 60, 67, but I'm using this feature of the fuel tank is kind of, you know, a showcase because it's, it's a really cool area to do this effect to and it's going to draw the viewer in. But I want to also be realistic with it and study the reference photos and have an end game. OK, well, this how does this streak? How does that look? So it's a combination of all that stuff, Timothy, that's really what you're trying to do. I would say, you know, it depends. But again, I'm not telling you guys how to do it. It's just, you know, you're, that's 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 on you. Finding your personal styles is is it's a personal thing. It's not that I'm going to be able to do. It's just I'm just the coach for the techniques. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty worn. <laughs> Run out of gas fast. But any any final? Let me get that thing off my. <laughs> it's blinding me. Yeah, you're welcome, dog. Have a good day, man. Have a good um, Thursday into the weekend. We'll talk soon. I know you get probably busy with your stuff too. It'd be great if you could paint a, a rail section for that. Yeah, I got to, you know, it's, there's, it'd be great to do all the stuff. <laughs> there's a lot to do, Zal. A lot to do. Yeah. Uh, how long uh, are web peking on trains? Uh, Corey, what, do you need more? <laughs> are you web peeking on trains? Oh, we're, yeah, I'll keep going, man. I'm, I'll keep going for, you know, this is, I'm not going to stop doing trains. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get better at it for sure. Uh, but tonight, tonight's tonight. We're we're done for tonight. But, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not doing this to fuck around, Corey. I'm really I'm I've, I'm no. I'm into it, man. This is this is the start of um, where I want to go with the trains. In fact, I shifted a lot of my Instagram follow pages to to train reference. So yeah, there's some. I've got uh, Pacific Northwest train dudes. I've got Massachusetts Maine train dudes. I found a Canadian Pacific train dude. Uh, Canadian is it CN and CP right? Canadian, Northern, Canadian Pacific, those guys. And we've got my my LA dudes from Southwest. So yeah, it's uh yeah, yeah. Everybody good. George, have a good night. Okay. 
Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep going with the rail stuff for sure. I'll keep going. And there will be, um, in the future, I, I probably say, you know, a year from now, if soonest, the way things go is, is you'll books on this, on the rail stuff for sure. Is there any other way to support you beyond buying the book? Uh, I'm getting to Patreon and, and, you know, you just want to send me money <laughs> to give me my, my stuff. You just PayPal me. I'm supposed to have up the super chat, by the way. I, I don't have it turned on yet. I've got to answer a bunch of questionnaires on YouTube. Um, my my account isn't fully monetized now for YouTube. So we're, I do need to do all that kind of stuff. But the books, it, I'm a publisher, Austin. So the reason I'm not like been super hard up for all that stuff is like, that's not my business is the books. This This is supposed to support the books more than anything else in terms of connecting the dots in terms of really getting you guys to understand like the OPR brushwork. And then you look at the books and you go, Oh, that's what he's doing. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully it gets kind of, yeah, I hope that helps Timothy. It's a, it's a deep question and you seem like you're, you're much more interested in that, which is philosophical, which is, but a lot of that comes with, you know, like all of this in that we talked about with Adam and Martin is this take, like, I mean, Adam and I've been doing this for 20 years now. Like this takes a long time to get to this point a little bit. So just be prepared. If, and I and I honestly, the models are wonderful. I've never, my all my headaches have been business related. None of it's been model related. I love all this stuff. So yeah, so I appreciate it. Yeah, but I love doing the books and all that stuff. It's been, it's been a true passion and, and you know, like a chef in a restaurant. Yeah, so it's, yeah, I've got to start learning the, the engine code names and all that stuff too, Corey, I have to get into that, but I'll, it'll take time too. That all that takes time learning all the stuff and the details and, the jargon, you know, that was kind of a thing, but uh, that's actually, so that angle right there, that's what I saw going out the window was like rolling away. Uh, I do need to buy a chassis for it. I, I, I was looking at eBay trailers um, from a couple of companies that can throw this on a trailer. I like to do a, a quick little Kenworth or white um, tractor. My dad was a truck driver, so I do know my trucks pretty well. My real dad was a truck driver. Rinaldi Motor Transport. There's some history, but I'll be, yeah, I'll put some car stuff up for you out too, by the way. But anyway, I'm out of here guys. Everybody. Thank you so much. It was a really nice evening tonight. Um, did we catch everybody's questions? Mike for whatever. Yeah, you're good. Um, yeah, Zal, just you, use your references, brother. Get in there you know, and study Russian dirt. <laughs> it's going to get you. Um, yeah. So, you know, this is for an A10 and, and posted it. Total enjoyment. But my camera work. That's a good part. Yeah, the camera does the thing. I use the camera to judge my own work. It's 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 relentless. It's ruth it's ruthless. The camera is ridiculously ruthless. Yeah. So it looks like I got most of the questions. Everybody, I love the way you slowly carefully work your squares coming in person and rush three step here. Ralph. How you doing, Ralph? Yeah. YouTube like I've still rather than pure. Yeah. All right. Let's just realize it here. Hold on. Okay, cool. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take we'll see you Sunday afternoon. Should be a beautiful day in Portland. We'll see you then, guys. Take care.